so uh, first of all uh, very good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you uh, from whichever part of the world you are in thanks for uh, joining in so uh, yes our uh, you know our micro conference is always special because it's uh, mainly revolved around some core people uh, from the printing industry and i'm glad that uh, this time we have uh, you know even mix of distribution from uh, all the segments uh, from we have people from google we have people from debian we have people from red hat we have people from uh, ubuntu and a mix of other other folks as well and of course uh, we are very glad to have mike uh, and phil uh, in this micro conference so again thanks everyone for joining in uh, i'm sure uh, that uh, today uh, we are going to have a couple of rounds of good discussions on couple of important topics uh, in the printing industry uh, which are going to change the way we all are printing uh, you know as of today so uh, before uh, starting in this is just an introduction uh, session which of uh, a short introduction session to just uh, take you through what we are trying to uh, talk about uh, in today's uh, conference uh, as you know uh, open source printing is has always been about making the printing uh, making printing easier for uh, for all of the people who are currently printing so uh, this is my one of my favorite images and i try to use this image uh, in all the lpcs or wherever we talk about open printing uh, because or open source printing uh, it's it's about it's not a printing a print related image it's about a, a self driven car so that is what we are trying to achieve uh, in in printing or scanning uh, through whatever measures we try to do so we have always tried to make things simpler easier and that is why we got rid of uh, of the process of installing drivers so now the users doesn't have to install driver from from our website so it's as simple as your uh, thumb drive you can just plug in your printer and you can print or scan so that has always been our aim to make things simple and easier and we will strive towards making it uh, more uh, fun right so today uh, the first two sessions will be from Mike on uh, two very uh, important topics uh, that is about CUPS 2.4 uh, and 2.5 and CUPS 3.0. Uh, CUPS is going to be a very important discussion because uh, as you know, currently we are having two different versions of CUPS. One that is, uh, you know, from Apple and the other one which has been forked from that version and we are having our own open printing version of cups where we are trying to work on the updated features or the bug fixes so that uh, it can be improved on and currently or most of or rather almost all the linux distributions are taking this version of cups that is open printing uh, version of cups uh Secondly, uh, the, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, the next three sessions about uh, print management, GUI, uh, common print dialog backend, and printer scanner uh, driver design and development. These two, se these three sessions will be taken up by Till. We had have a couple of interesting updates, especially with respect to common print dialog and the GUI part. Uh, some some developments have happened in these areas. So we'd like to take you all uh, on, you know, with regards to these sessions. And uh, last but not the least, uh, the session, there is a session from Bhavna. Bhavna was our GSOC student um, this year. So uh, she was working, uh, she, she was mentored by Mike and she worked on scanning in Papal. There are uh, some significant, uh, significant developments in these, uh, in this area as well. So Bhavna will take us through that. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting discussion. Uh, I would not like to uh, take up more time in this, uh, rather hand it over to Mike. But before that, just setting up some ground rules. So uh, we have slot timings and sessions. So just in case if we forget about the time or while speaking, while discussing. So I my uh, nice, ugly, bad face will come up. And I'll try to put up these kind of uh, these kind of notes uh, where you know uh, this. So I have a couple of them. So the first one is a reminder for five minutes. The second one is a reminder for uh, three minutes. 
and there is another reminder for one minute and the last one is time's up so i'll, I'll be the uh, i'll keep the time i'll check on the time so in and i'll keep on reminding uh, the speakers about the time when when it is very close to completion and uh, thanks to uh, zednek for uh, keeping the notes so uh, with this i will hand it over to mike to take it from here yes so and mike with the time it's also important because once we we want to do the other sessions and the other and the other thing is there can be people participating in linux plumbers they go to one micro conference uh, listen into a session then to another zapping around between the micro conferences and when they come to us they want to 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 get the session they expect so right. mike now it's yours okay let me see if i can Allow the camera. Okay. Can you see me? Yes, yeah. yes, we can so see. So Mike, you. I'll I'll make you the presenter. Okay. Yeah. So can you see if you can uh, you know uh, control the slides? Uh, let's see here. Um Yes, on the on the lower left, click on the plus sign. Okay, here we go. And yep. then opens a pop-up menu and, and choose your presentation. Yes, now you okay. have done it correctly. All right, so um, we're going to talk a bit about COPS. And, and while I'm going to have a little bit of information for people who are, are called in here um, about what we're doing, there's a bunch of things that we need to talk about, decide, because um, going forward, we need to make sure that, you know, we have the the uh, resources and infrastructure in place to, to keep this going forward. Um, so uh, I'm going to start off here, here the basic agenda. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, who, who's running the show with CUPS right now, and then uh, go through to CUPS 2.4, which is about to go into beta. Cups 2.5, which will be the final 2.x, it'll have some more uh, stuff, and we'll talk about that. And then 3.0, which is the big transition, getting rid of the um, printer drivers, all that stuff. So um, Cups 3.0 is long term. Cups 2.4 and 2.5 are are shorter term. So um, many of you already know this, but like I left Apple at the end of December in 2019. And uh, after I left, uh, there were a grand total of three changes committed um, to the Apple Cups repository. And there were hundreds of pull requests and, and uh, bug reports that went unanswered. And um, I did a whole lot of pleading and prodding um, to my old uh, manager at Apple. And after about nine months, we decided uh, that uh, things weren't going to move along. So in September, I uh, I talked to the other um, open printing maintainers and I said, um, I think we need to fork and and would you support this and all that. And and everybody was very positive about it. So I went ahead and I created a fork, and then split that off in the GitHub uh, repository. So we're actually an independent project from Apple Cups. We're not a treated as a fork anymore and uh, we restarted development and in a matter of uh, a couple months there we've had um, quite a few changes and fixes go in and did uh, 233 OP1 and 233 OP2 uh, bug fix releases and those uh, took care of all the, the outstanding issues that that had accumulated over over that year um, and then this spring, uh, Apple uh, contracted me to to get back involved with Cups development because I think they they saw what was happening and also that that uh, they were having trouble keeping up on things. And so I've been uh, merging the bug fixes that we did in open printing back into Apple Cups, and and uh, uh, that's going to be part of the upcoming uh, Mac OS 
uh, I forget the the name they gave it. Not, maybe it's Big Sur. I can't remember. Anyway, the next Mac OS release has has this in it, and then there will be one more subsequent um, release after two three five that that will have some other changes in it. But um, my involvement with Apple will be wrapping up by the end of this year. Um, but their focus is slowly on doing bug fixes to cups through two three x. They aren't interested in two four. Um, so effectively, open printing is now leading cups development. And uh, we should just decide that that's the way it is and, and move forward. All right, so right now we're very loosely organized. Uh, there's half a dozen uh, core developers that regularly do pull requests, contribute code, um, do packaging on various Linux distribution. Um, and I'm doing my very best not to become the benevolent dictator of cups again, um, because that's not a good long term solution. And honestly, there's there's other things I want to work on. Um, so, you know, as far as an organization, uh, open printing and 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 deciding what we're going to do with cups, you know, we can do the loose consensus and and you know. I'll, all a bunch of equals deciding, you know, what, what's the direction going to be of this software that we all depend on. Um, but it's not necessarily um, the optimal solution for uh, the day to day management of the CUPS project itself. And it's important to note that CUPS itself is no longer this monolithic uh, provide everything solution that when I, I first started CUPS out, I had to include everything, including GoScript. And now all those pieces are split out into several uh, other projects. Um, Cups filters is is an important one, um, and you know Scoot and Print and HPLIP and and so forth. Um, so you know we need open printing to kind of take the the broad view of of what to do for printing in general, and then we need to define some uh, leadership structure within the Cups project in particular. Um, so it's a little easier to manage because I think for any one person, this is uh, a little overwhelming. So um, I figured this out. It's been 23 years since I did the first uh, alpha release of CUPS. Um, and I've basically been doing all of the releases uh, since then. And uh, as rewarding as that is, uh, it's not something that can can sustain itself. I, I, I'm just not available to do that. Um, so my proposal, and we can discuss this obviously, is um, you know all of the core developers that are uh, maintaining cups for their distributions and everything uh, have the requisite skills to to be a release manager. And and uh, I've got another slide after this this that describes the the role here. But basically. Um, to take on the the management of a single minor release. Um, so you're looking at about a year of development to incorporate any new features and bug fixes and so forth for that release. And then once that's out, just doing every couple months of a uh, patch release that has any bug fixes that are accumulated. Um, so fairly lightweight responsibilities. And uh, because we normally have one feature branch and one maintenance branch going at, at all times, you know, for, you know, like right now we have, have uh, 2.4 is in development. And if we needed to, we could do um, fixes on the two, three branch. Um, you know, we've, we've got that structure so that we can, we can keep things going and going forward. I think it's still important. It's, it's worked well over the last 23 years. And um, I think it's important to, to uh, uh, keep that momentum. Um, so if, if something were to happen to to uh, to a developer that they weren't able to continue to be release manager, um, we'd have somebody already involved in the process that might be able to take over um, or, or fill in as needed. So any questions or comments so far?
So your thought is that, for example, the first the first release will be, uh, for example, managed by me from Ubuntu, the next by Thomas from Debian, the next by Zdenek from Red Hat, and so on. Yes. All right, and so let me just go on the next slide here. And, and, and this, obviously we can talk about this and, and, and uh, tweak this, but I, I look at, at the, the role here for release manager. You're basically responsible for one feature release, you know, minor release milestone in, in GitHub, and you coordinate with the developers uh, to incorporate bug fixes and features, reviewing pull requests, that sort of thing. And you, you know, if, if you're, if you've got a bug fix uh, in your feature release and it applies to the previous, um, you know, the, the previous feature release, the current stable release, then you would coordinate with the release manager for that um, train to say, okay, um, this, as an example, once 2.4 is out and 2.5 development has started, if there's a bug fix that's going into 2.5, it should probably go into 2.4. So you just coordinate those fixes between um, the two branches. And then um, we get um, emails, um, you know, when things break, you know, you, you break the build, um, we're testing builds on, on uh, two different Linux uh, architectures plus Mac OS plus, plus Windows for the Windows tools. Um, so anytime somebody commits something and it breaks, it, it shows up, uh, whether it's been pushed onto a main branch or it's part of a pull request. Um, so that is useful information. So you can say, okay, uh, uh, we need to fix this or we need to work on this if it's in a pull request. But, you know, it's, it's fairly straightforward to, to do that. And then uh, there's a script uh, in the source uh, directory called make source dist uh, that handles uh, creating the tarballs and and uh, signing them with GPG and um, and then you can post the announcements up on the um, on the website which is hosted on github um, so all, all these things it's you know if, if I look at the amount of time I spend just doing this sort of stuff uh, and not any development or something I might be looking at a couple hours a week um, it's, it's really not a, a huge time commitment and, um, and it's something that, that, um, you know, allows things to, to keep going and, and, and we can set a schedule and, and keep, um, keep people to that. And if things miss, then they get pushed to a, a later release. So, um, yeah, I think it, it'll be important going forward that we can kind of coordinate our feature releases with when different Linux distributions are rolling out um, their new feature releases so that we can make sure that uh, like having a, a stable release of CUPS 2.4 before uh, one, February or something so that we can make sure that the next long-term support version of Ubuntu has it in there, for example. And, and uh, same for um, Red Hat and the same for Arc Linux and, you know, name your Linux distribution. Um, it'd be good so that people can, can, uh, can follow along and, and we don't get the situation where we have uh, a 10 year old version of cups still being distributed um, when it could have been synced up. So at least you're within a couple years um, because that has a negative effect on, on um, people supporting uh, things in cups and also finding issues um, because we've had some bugs uh, in the past that um, are in a really old version of cups but weren't reported or discovered until you know like something in cups 1.3 didn't get discovered until cups 2.0 and and that's the sort of thing we'd like to avoid having those kinds of bugs um, and the last bullet on there just a, a note you know it's not the release manager's job to do all the coding not asking, okay, this is going to be uh, Till's version of CUPS for, for 2.5, and this isn't going to be, you know, whoever's version for 3.0. It's, you know, this is just uh, a, a manager's role, uh, and, it's, and it's really a light management. We're not, you know, a full, full on, I'm, I'm just sitting back and, and letting everybody else do the work, but uh, you're also not putting yourself into the middle of it and doing all the work. So, it's important is that there is someone who will do the coding. Otherwise, you are 
presenting here these nice ideas, especially of the 3.0 and no one will code it. Right. Well, and it's one of the things too, um, if, if I'm going to uh, devote more time to doing certain development myself, it's helpful if I'm not also then keeping track of all of the other changes that are going in and, and prodding people, you know, Hey, I need, I need this fix or, or, you know, spending time doing review on things when I could be coding. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always this, this give and take, um, with this kind of a position. And, you know, I think it's important that, that, um, we don't overload one person with, with all of the work. Uh, I just wanted to say, Mike, it is a good idea. I would like to try that release manager role, uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's the it will be the, the first time I'm I'm doing something like this because on system config printer it uh, doesn't ha have have uh, such uh, so such such issue. Uh, th there isn't so uh, there aren't so much issues. So uh, I haven't uh, uh, had su such experience yet. So if you if you are okay, if if I uh, write email about uh, about something and I will ask you about something, then it's okay for me too. So oh, absolutely. This is, and this isn't just uh, you know you're all on your own. This is uh, you're you're basically taking care of 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 the this release branch but it's it's a matter of you know if, if there's something that you're not sure you bring in other developers or or uh or other managers to say hey wait a minute they got this bug fix but this doesn't look right or i'm not sure about this or or uh, you know i'm not sure if this is something we want to include right now and and then we can have that conversation it's it's really meant to be just this is to handle the day-to-day -day normal stuff and then if it goes beyond that then we have a larger discussion so that um, everyone is, is able to to participate and and you know there's no surprises like oh we put this code in here and it's caused this major problem someplace else and 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 why didn't anybody bring this up and we don't we want to communicate um, and you know with experience you know some of the day to day stuff may be unfamiliar at first and then once you get experience with a full a few pull requests or a few bug reports then it it becomes something more um more normal for you and then you know you won't necessarily have to reach out as much but it's absolutely it's like um if if you wanted to say um you know be the release manager for the the two four patch releases, for example, which might be a, a, a fairly uh, lightweight to, uh, way to get into this. Um, you know, I'm absolutely available to mentor you or anyone else um, when it comes to this role. It's it's more just a matter of of making sure that the responsibility is divided up so that no one person is is stuck holding the, the bag. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I I will I will write uh, email to you and we, we can uh, we can make some arrangements. Thanks. Excellent, Nick. It's also nice that you the, do the start. The first one is one thing is that I will have to release uh, Cups filters 2.0 and finish the the retrofitting of the driver so i'm currently uh, rather busy but i'm i i think i'm i would be well to uh, then uh, do the 2.5 the release manager of the 2.5 great right so am i audible now yes okay okay thanks uh... or mike should i better be the one of 3.0 <laughs> okay, so I think this is a wonderful idea from Mike to have a, a governance in process. Uh, so because if we are going to maintain cups, uh, you know, uh, to the fullest, we should have a governance and and a release manager role. 
but uh, Mike, just one thought. Like, uh, say, some if if somebody observes observes some problem in in cups, which has been there in the earlier versions as well. So, what should be our recommendation to log the bug uh, in both Apple Radar bugs and uh, and in Open Printing? So, so generally, I think for sure, like for what the code that we're putting out, we want it logged in Open Printing cups. Um, when it comes to something that might also apply to Apple cups, um, we can certainly let people know, hey, and this also applies to Apple cups, so you might want to report it there. But my, my feeling is that um, based on, on the past year and a half um, and more, actually almost two years now, um, and, and the relative lack of, of um, responsiveness and i know a certain amount of it is is uh because of covid and people aren't in the office and they don't have the normal uh nagging from a manager to say hey are you checking up on this um but i also know that that um that cups isn't the first passion of 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 most of the the current engineers working on the printing team at apple um yeah, and without going into too many details, the, the printing team is also responsible for AirPlay, SharePlay, um, and a, a bunch of other, a home kit and a few, a few other networking technologies at Apple. Um, and they got given that because AirPrint was so successful. And well, if you can do that with printing, you can do it with anything, right? And so uh, the team is kind of divided up on that. And so the resources available for printing um, have been reduced, um, though I think to a certain extent, a lot of the, the printing issues are solved, if you will, um, not optimally, but you know, the, the resources are, are being diverted into other projects. And so um, you have both people who, are, who their first love isn't open source and, and, and maintaining cups, and have other responsibilities it's it's hard to get people to focus on fixing cups bugs so i think if people start filing bugs on apple cups especially once i'm no longer contracted with apple um, uh, they're just going to accumulate and i don't think they're going to get uh dealt with so i would say let's let's focus on on uh getting people filing bugs uh, on open printing and if there is a bug that comes across it's serious or whatever um, I can take the the um, the responsibility to forward those to the the manager uh, and res responsible for printing at Apple and uh, Rich Blanchard and uh, and then he can do with it as he will. Um, but um, yeah, even even being contracting for them, I'm not getting a lot of of uh, uh, feedback or, or or responsiveness. You know, here, you know, I provide them with a drop. Here's the bug fixes, and and they'll integrate them. But that's about it. So, um, I I I think it's more important for us to to uh, focus on what we're doing, and and what Apple's doing is what Apple's doing. And if they decide to follow, great. But let's just move forward. Yes, the master is open pointing. So the first adders to report bugs to to make suggestions feature feature uh, requests is open pointing, and there you will get answered, and we will work on it. And Apple will perhaps simply take what we are delivering. Right. And otherwise, Apple has to do like uh, we, Microsoft does WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux. Then Apple can do MSL, and then <laughs> then uh, Mac users can win too. Yeah, I don't. I don't really think that will happen. But um, from some of the discussions I've had, there's there's been some talk of taking more of what is used on iOS, which is. Also cups, but it's just the cups libraries with another spooler um, that I wrote that, you know, I, I've written so many spoolers over the last 20 <laughs> years that 
you know, it's, it's, it's become kind of a second nature to me, but, but, um, I have a feeling there's probably going to be more development that way if they actually get to do any major development, but it'll still be compatible with what we're doing. So Puppel has also a little bit of a spooler. It's not actually yes. a spooler, but some things it has to, you should move it to open printing so that all is streamlined. Well, uh, that uh, hopefully eventually will happen. I still have some open issues with GitHub over that because of the whole sponsorship thing. And um, because the sponsorship, if it, if I move the repository, then all the sponsorship get, uh, gets po uh, moved to open printing instead of me. So and once since I have existing sponsors, that gives a little bit of a problem. So, so in, uh, open, in GitHub, you cannot distinguish to direct sponsorships to a single to a single uh, repository well you can but the 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 don the sponsorships and the donations are associated with the organization or the owner of the repository not who you would you know the the primary developer or anything like that so we'll we'll figure it out but Yes, yeah, yes. Right now, I'm, yes. I'm still dealing with and that. And we are also working on uh, a ways to finance, uh, uh, to, to get money in, in, into open printing. And perhaps we can, together with the Linux Foundation, find an all over solution so that uh, sponsors and projects and everything can be uh, connected however we want, I hope. Yeah, that, that yeah. would be good. Um, I'd also, uh, and uh, we'll do this offline, uh, tell, but I, I do want to get some of the, the, uh, the mailing lists and administrative, uh, addresses through Linux, uh, foundation set up so that, um, uh, right now for cups, security bugs are, are, uh, directed to my, um, security at msuite.org. Um, and I'd like that to be like security at Linux foundation or something like that, or to, uh, yeah, an open printing open email printing. address. So, um, then, you know, we can, we can manage, uh, those things collectively. Um, yes, yes. Security yeah. should all, all, all be one address for all the open printing, uh, projects, yeah. which are their cups filters yeah. also will receive security. I can work on it, Mike, and uh, I can work with the Linux Foundation teams uh, with regards to that. And I'll keep you posted offline uh, regarding the community funding initiative that is going on for open printing uh, so okay, that good. we can have some donations from the distro groups or all those who are benefiting from open printing uh, to give us some donations to carry on the, uh, you know, org uh, in a better way. Okay. So I'll, I'll keep Excellent. you posted on those. Okay, thank you. All right, so in the interest of time, because we're burning through time very quickly here, um, let's uh, move on to the CUPS 2.4 topic. Um, so uh, just a brief summary of what's in there right now. Um, there's over 90 fixes and you know, per, uh, pull requests that have been merged uh, since 2.3.3 OP2, which was the second open printing release of CUPS 2.3.3. Um, the big new feature, we have official support for AirPrint and Mopria printer sharing, so that if you're printing from from iOS, Mac OS, um, uh, Chrome OS, uh, Android, Android uh, Windows 10, uh, it all works through IPP, and and uh, you can set it up so that uh, each of the queues advertises whatever uh, ready media that you want, and and um, it's all all sorts of good information available um on that um the second one actually i haven't pushed this yet but there's a new uh authentication callback because we have a, a password callback for normal sorts of authentication and then there's an oauth callback and i'm currently testing that with my uh, moauth uh, software to make sure it's all working but this allows us to have a hook for doing oauth support and um and feeding that into the normal authentication callback so um, I'm just getting that uh, support rolled in there until I'll probably be um, sending you a, uh, a request to review the pull request once that is is ready to go. Yes, yes. 
Um, and then uh, there's explicit container support. Till did uh, the Snapcraft stuff, and I also want to look at uh, Docker and and App Image and, and a few others um, in order to put cups and all the the other uh, bits and pieces that you need for printing into a uh, a container um, so that you can support printing um, more safely and. Uh, so that's actually some really exciting stuff to to have in there, um, and um, you know for years we've had cups config a script there to give you the the uh, uh, compiler flags and the linker options, and um, for years we've also had people calling for support for package config, and so you know, I added that and um, um, we're deprecating cups config and and come. Cups 3.0 will remove it. And, um, and speaking of deprecations, we're also going to deprecate Kerberos support, though um, I'm guessing it won't be removed until Cups 3.0. And uh, the replacement for Kerberos is OAuth. Um, and similarly, Microsoft is uh, with with Active Directory is migrating from Kerberos to OAuth. Um, so we're kind of positioned properly um, with respect to other services, but there are a number of, of uh, uh, Kerberos-based uh, single sign-on solutions uh, on Linux that we need to make sure that we have a good story for. Here's how you migrate from using Kerberos to using OAuth in your environment and um, have all the pieces in place. So um, it's one of the reasons we deprecate uh, before removing um, because we want to let people know, but um, as an organization, this is something we need to plan for, and I've got some slides for that um, for later. Um, so let's defer the converse, uh, discussions about that. But um, is any any questions about the the changes for Cups two four? Okay, um, so I'm close to releasing the first beta, um, and it really comes down to uh, me getting the pull request there for Tilda review, and and there's a half a dozen uh, PRs and and bugs. I'm I'm just going through and and um, uh, finishing up. Um, but um, what I'd like to do either the end of this week or beginning of next week, release the first beta, um, and then two weeks after, do the first release candidate, and then. You know, mid to end of October, do two four zero. So we'll have have the uh, the the first new feature release from Open Printing out um, at the end of October, and then every few months there do uh, another bug fix release um, to to address any issues that come up. Um, so with this, uh, I'm guessing till you'd probably be uh, either cups two four one or two four two for um for the long term support for uh, as, 20, as these releases are bug fix releases the 2242 when it comes in Mar in march it will go also go in because a bug fix release can can't get in after feature freeze feature okay, freeze good. is mid to end february and the feature release you give already in october so we get a comfortable whole cycle for testing this and so it's no problem. It will be 242 then in in uh, the Ubuntu uh, JJ22.4 LTS. Okay. All right. Um, so after 240 is out, I'll go ahead and create the branch. Um, and you know, as usual, every time we have bug fixes, then we merge them to master and to to the 24 branch. And then uh, I think we have our answer. Is the neck? Sorry, is the dead neck? Well, do the neck? Yeah, the neck. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get it there. Um, uh, so he'll he'll take care of being release manager for uh, these releases, and and um, and it, it, this will be probably one of the. The easier ones to to uh, to manage as well, just because you're kind of taking over halfway through. And but um, 
yeah i appreciate it because it it will uh free me up for some other things here so that's two four and then for two five so what's in two four for oauth is the callback so that we can support oauth and then we can start actually prototyping things and 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 uh, making sure that everything works smoothly. So in 2.5, uh, I split out the, the CUPS D support for OAuth uh, as a separate issue. And basically this is uh, to be able to do printer sharing where we would normally have auth type negotiate for Kerberos. Now we wanna be able to uh, offer auth type bearer, which is what they, they call it for, for OAuth uh, bearer tokens. Um, and then be able to assign uh, scopes and and an OAuth authorization server and all that stuff. So get that support into CUPSD so that you can configure printer sharing with it. And then um, also have a de default OAuth callback for the desktop. And for Linux, at least, it, I'm I'm guessing that a Dbus API is probably the best way to avoid uh, circular dependencies between GNOME and, and CUPS, uh, because GNOME is linked against CUPS. Um, but to be able to bring up an embedded web page um, on the screen and, and be able to go through the authorization um, UI that's necessary. And even, uh, I know there is some OAuth support in GNOME already. So um, we might be able to re use something that's already existing. Um, but the idea here would be then if you're on the desktop and you can connect to uh, a Dbus service um, to bring up this authorization, then you can you can do what you need to do automatically, and it's all kind of transparent to the applications, and and then you know yeah. we actually have a real single sign-on solution, and and you know we can cache the tokens and do all the stuff that we need to do. Yes, um, and Dbus goes snap to snap. This is also yes. important. So yes. you have no problems with snapping cups and no problems with snapping the desktop. Right. Um, so or container to container we... to generalize. Yeah, good. Um, another uh, thing that, and, and this has come up particularly with uh, printer applications, is when you have a printer application running as a user and a printer application or, or cups running as, as a uh, root or in a container, um, they all end up with different X509 certificates, but to a client device, they're connecting to the same host. And so, hey, you should all be using the same certificate and you get all sorts of unfriendly dialogue saying that, you know, this, this printer is trying to steal your child or, or you know or steal steal your money and which isn't the case obviously but you know we want to avoid those sorts of things so um i have a, a kind of a a high level improve this um uh issue to to track and and that would be a uh, a big thing to to look at um supporting because if we can if we can implement this and presumably with a dbus api again or something like that um then uh the whole uh situation of of uh getting credentials and 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 uh supporting tls um becomes much simpler for for the linux uh systems that are supporting it um so we have that and and you know it would be nice if if uh we can we can do more things like uh, with Let's Encrypt. We can do the uh, signed certificates uh, for you know regular domain names. We can't do that for .dot local. And how can we um, generate certificates that will be trusted by the devices on your network? You know, in a corporate environment. And um, you know, how can we automate that? So um, there may be some standards and stuff that we can we can. Uh, uh, used as well here, but um, I, I'm really import, uh, interested in making sure that CUPS can handle that 
stuff behind the scenes uh, and talk to whatever is going to provide um, those solutions. So that's that that issue. Um, and then um, this keeps coming up, and so I created a an, an issue to track this: is how can we do localization in one place? Because all of the distributions are doing their own localization of cups, and Apple does its own lo localization of cups, and then Cups tries to include localization stuff that's been contributed. Um, so it's all kind of hodgepodge, and and there's several um, solutions that are available um, of of varying qualities, and um, you know that's something that we need to to kind of solve. And and I figured targeting it at Cups two five is you know, gives us enough time to actually make this happen, but also ensure that that we have good quality there. Because with cups, the web interface and the the library and the programs are, are all kind of feeding off of their own separate catalogs. And yeah, I want to try to do something a little saner in the future. Um, and the last thing there is. Um, you know, if there's things specific to Docker, or app image, or other containers um, to to uh, properly support cups running on those things and have them available to applications, um, uh, and if they require feature changes and not just like little tweaks or bug fixes uh, to what we've got in two four, then this is the place to put them. So I think. Tell you had volunteered to be the two five release manager. So. I'm no, I'm I'm thinking whether it should be the two dot five or whether I should better do the three dot zero. What do you think? Um, well, maybe let's let's discuss once we get to to three zero there. But um, with three zero, we may need multiple. So let's let's. Let's let's defer that discussion. I, I can pencil you in on two five, and if not you, then we'll find somebody else. But to to do these sorts of things, um, hopefully, as somebody that that has some familiarity with the desktop environment um, uh, and and the what's available on different uh, Linux distributions um, for OAuth and for uh, TLS and and for localization. Um, you know, better than me to to be kind of driving those things, and um, and that'll let me focus on on some of the lower level stuff. Okay, we got our five minute warning for this session. Yes, um, and Zdenek, would you perhaps uh, help us to get the system which you use for system uh, system config printer for the translations get into cups to have a better localization? Uh, yeah, I, I can try that. I had one uh, one person who said it for me. I can I uh, I can contact him. He he is from uh, Fedora uh, Fedora Group, so I can I can see what what can be done for cups if if uh, that uh, WebBlade system is is the system uh, we can agree on to use. Okay. Yes. If you can add some info to the to that issue there, just to, so we we can keep keep track of that, that would be great. Okay, I I'll check the old system of printer issue about this, and uh, in uh, if uh, there there will not be much information, I will point the guy from that system of issue to the cups issue, and maybe uh, he will have some more information. Or I can ping him uh, through Red Hat means because I think he's Red Hat too. So, okay. okay. Noted. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Um, and then, uh, in the interest of time, let me just uh, slip forward to planning. So, um, the schedule on this would be similar to the schedule for this year. So, uh, figure a year to get everything in, in place. Uh, for two five, and then start beta release candidate and, and stable releases, and kind of follow the the same thing. We kind of get into this yearly um, feature release and and then uh, patch releases throughout the year, um, and we can decide if if uh, 
if we need to keep this up or if, if we get in a good spot, say with 3.0, then, then we can keep just doing patch releases until there's something significant. But um, yeah, it seems like uh, from my, my past experience in previous CUPS releases, Every couple months is usually a good cadence for the the uh, bug fixes, and and every year, you know, you can set you know small feature goals and and get them done over like six months, and then start just refining and and bug fixing from there. Any feedback? I think the next slide is, oh, okay, um, I got one more here. So, um, so one of the things, because this will be probably the last of the 2.x uh, updates for CUPS, um, do we want to commit to doing uh, bug fix releases for 2.5 for longer? Um, and if so, how long? Because Cups one one, we went to one one twenty three, and then we had distribution distributions doing patch releases that long after that, you know, uh, doing that, um, you know, and and we were we were like cups one seven, and they're still doing one one twenty three dot x. Um, <laughs> so I don't necessarily think we want to go too long, but at the same time, yeah, uh, two five is going to be the last for, with printer drivers, and three zero is going to be driverless. And so do we, do we want to go like an extra year or is there, is there feeling in, in the room here um, for the optimal? Yes, perhaps a year is good, but then, then who then uh, the uh, longer should own the, the crazy, uh, Enterprise distro maintainers should, should, should do on their own. Uh, as the enterprise maintainer, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we usually uh, don't. Uh, uh, we we kind of expect that uh, upstream will will move uh, with the with the releases. and it's kind of our part of the job to uh, to. Uh, adjust adjust the uh, upstream patches to that old old releases. Like uh, we, we usually uh, do 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 the things like uh, we we try if if that uh, if that uh, problem is in the latest upstream and if it is uh, we we report it to uh, to, to to the upstream. But uh, I I don't think uh, we as as upstream uh, sh uh, should. Uh, uh, take into account that old uh, that, that old releases like uh, st still the, there there will there will be some people who will use centos uh, uh, with, with old cups but uh, uh, i think we don't we don't need to support so such releases as upstream okay yes and if those distros do the adapters between the old and new things like tim war did for the old cups browsing in cups browse deep <laughs> when it's all far in <laughs> all right well that's that's good i i like that answer um <laughs> all right and then uh, uh the second note here is just and we'll we'll talk more um in the second half of this, when we talk about Cups 3.0, about the um, coordinating uh, all of our X509 and OAuth stuff that's going into 2.5 with 3.0. Um, and then um, this last little bit, um, I figure we're going to need to get desktop developers involved with OAuth UI, um, either as a separate project, um, with a debug service that we can talk to, or if it's something that, you know, there's, there is some stuff that's not super well documented in GNOME already for OAuth um, that maybe we can, we can use, um, but it's not 100% clear. Um, and maybe, you know, talking to somebody who's familiar with that um, 
can say, oh yeah, yeah, you just use this API and, and you're done. Um, that would be an awesome answer. But um, right now I don't think it is. So uh, if, 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 we, if we need to do our own UI, then we'll need to have a little project that, that implements it that can then be packaged up and distributed. And then we can look for it in libcups and say, okay, is this dbus service available? Yes. Okay, then we're doing OAuth. And if it's not, oh well, sorry. So um, that's that's kind of the last of my my stuff. This is a uh, fairly lightweight as far as fe uh, feature releases go. I think the um, the OAuth support and, and libcups is going to be one of the 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 bigger things, but um, the other things are aren't small either. It's just there's a lot of coordination with other pieces of the operating system that, that we're going to have to do. So uh, we've hit our, our end point, I believe, right, Evik? Yes, uh, I think that's, we that's can right. now right. yeah. transition yeah. right away to the version okay. 3.0 of CUPS. Yeah, so I think we're supposed to do uh, uh, a 10 minute break. Uh, no, no, the break is after you. Oh, the break's after, after this you. one. Okay. Yes, there are two breaks. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I don't want to. Oh. No, no, no. We we just combine both of your sessions, and then we'll be having a five minutes break. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, cups three all, and uh, I reformatted my transition slide from the the printing summit. Um, this is this is what we're talking about with CUPS 3.0. We have this transition from CUPS talking to printer drivers and PPD files, as well as IPP everywhere stuff, to everything is IPP everywhere, and it's either a native printer or something going through a printer application. Um, and you know, as far as CUPS is concerned, everything looks the same. Um, and this is kind of the holy grail. What I've been working towards since. For the last 23 years. Um, so, uh, and a lot of this is, is kind of a summary. If you've seen my previous slides, uh, this is um, going to be pretty much the same, but we have the commands that we use today. We have a new local server that just runs as the user instead of running as root, um, has a domain socket or, and or dbus and or xpc. xpc is the Apple version of dbus. Um, only has temporary queues that are created and, and destroyed, um, you know, as you, you need them for printing. Um, it handles the basic spooling, uh, filtering and rasterization. And the job history is basically limited to what you've printed recently um, in order for you to see, oh yeah, my file printed or my printer is stalled and I need to put paper in or whatever. And um, does this demo run all the session, or does it start when you open the print dialog and stop when the job is printed? Yes, it'll depend on the on the platform, but um, generally speaking, it it should should be um, run on demand. Um, but in certain circumstances, uh, certain platforms, they they kind of pre-start it in order to have better performance because there's a a bigger hit and in, in starting up this, but the idea here is a local server wouldn't have all of the cups D startup stuff. So it would start much more quickly than, um, than cups D does today. Um, and then to go along with a local server, there's a sharing server and this one runs as root and does the things that cups D normally does. Um, and, um, it may have a domain socket. It will have TCP sockets for the rest of the world. And it only has permanent queues so that you're creating a, a queue for sharing uh, and not for something that's transient. And you can do all sorts of fun spooling stuff, holding jobs and 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 uh, and uh, doing release printing and 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 other sorts of of cool stuff and and accounting and authentication and 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 the web interface and, and uh, configuring it to do all sorts of, of things that, you know, even the creator of cups never intended, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's where you get your, your department print server kind of a, uh, a setup. And then the so last. I'm, 
Do I need to make two cup snips then? Well, I think the idea there would be you have a, a sharing uh, server snap if you want to do that. And then you have a local server either as a snap or as just something that's installed as part of the OS. It, you know, it really depends on, on, on the distribution, how they want to package this stuff up. But um, the idea would be local server is what you have on every, every device and sharing server is just what you install on something that you actually want to be a server. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and then the last piece there is the li cups library as we've got today. Um, and it's the common piece that everything depends on. So, um, you know, it's, I, over the years, I have toyed with the idea of having a separate lib IPP or lib cups or something pr separate from the main cups project. And I've resisted it just because it makes it harder to build, but we may end up getting to that point. And I'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, so again, visually here you have at the, in the user level user session, you know, you have your applications, your cups commands, your local server talking to the cups library. And at the system level, you have your printer applications and your sharing server that are actually um, serving up printers and, and stuff and, you know, system wide as opposed to just at, at the user level. Uh, a little more detail on the local server. Um, the idea here is um, one of the features of modern uh, operating systems is this notion of of uh, limited access, um, especially to networking and, and so forth, because um, malware people have gotten so good at writing code that does things that you don't want it to do. And so you try to separate out all of the things that would necessarily require your word processor to need access to the internet or to the local network, um, you know, so that if somebody writes a macro because your word processor has macro support, they won't be able to go and 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 uh, uh, rifle through your your network and see see what sorts of secrets they can discover. Um, so, your modern architecture is is uh, is putting everything in containers and and siloing it and preventing access. And so the idea here is um, when you're printing from a user application and you want to discover printers. And you want to find out what media is in the printer. You talk to a, a a service in your user session that can actually is is allowed to talk to the network printers, and so it introduces a little bit of of latency and and a little bit of of uh, overhead, but at the same time it makes things a whole lot more secure. Um, so this local server is going to be responsible for that, and uh, anytime you need to uh, ask for a password or go through uh, an OAuth uh, authorization or any of that, it can also support that because it's running as the user and, and it's it's part of your user session. Um, and then to also handle the basic uh, conversions that you need, either going to PDF or going to raster as needed for IPP Everywhere printers. So this is kind of encapsulating everything that we do with cups for basic printing and putting it into this local server. And, and uh, it's actually, when you, when you do it at, at this kind of level, it's much simpler than uh, trying to support the whole CUPS filter chain. So we can make this a very lightweight process. Um, and as I mentioned before, the job history is just the current session of login. You're not gonna have any long-term uh, job history um, there's no web interface because there's nothing to configure, um, you know, aside from, you know, saying, okay, I've got a department print server uh, at this host name or IP address. And, and when you're asking for the list of available printers, it will show you the list of those printers as well as anything it can discover. So um, any kind of configuration you do for this thing is very limited. Uh, and there's no need for a web interface or any any complex management you uh, utilities. It's just a, a very basic um, service. Um, for the sharing server, ho however, it's a different animal. 
there it's it's doing all of the the stuff uh, that current cups D does for doing printer sharing plus it's going to add uh, support for uh, some new standards in particular the shared infrastructure extensions um, that I did several years ago now um, that is used also for uh, Microsoft's universal print service as part of their new um, Active Directory Azure um, managed printing solutions. Uh, so we'll be aligned with what is is happening in, in Microsoft land and, and Apple's also moving in that direction. Um, so um, using um, the three O cups in in uh, corporate and educational environments anywhere where you have an enterprise network, this will integrate very nicely and you know, new printers that are supporting shared infrastructure will be able to interface with this directly. So I think we'll have a very good answer to how do I deploy Linux printing in, in the enterprise. Um, so because it has all this configurability, it will have a web interface and it will have, you know, not necessarily a cupsd.conf file, but, you know, something very similar. And, um, you know, you have the full job history, you have accounting, you'll, there'll be an interface that you'll be able to um, collect the accounting information, do reports, all that fun stuff. So it's basically, this is this is a full up job accounting, print service, access control lists, uh, everything you would need to do in the enterprise. So any questions? Uh, Mike, I would uh, I have a question for the local server. Uh, I've met some opinions about uh, security, like some users are afraid of uh, using uh, MDNS for uh, finding printers automatically because uh, they they think their local network is uh, not secure. So what, uh, what is the answer to do that? Like uh, uh, that, that uh, that's the main uh, the, their main uh, thing for having print uh, uh, having permanent queues installed. So the, such such people would uh, need to install sharing server. So yeah, I think generally. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I think generally, if if you're talking one or two printers, you could probably just deploy profiles. Um, the, the local server could say, okay, I know I've got a printer uh, here and a printer there. Um, and then that's all that the user would see because MDNS wouldn't work. Um, and then uh, in the case where you have a larger enterprise where you're going to have dozens or hundreds or thousands of printers, you do the, the sharing server and then you point the, the clients to the sharing server with the profiles. And then you don't have to worry about DNSSD. Um, Another alternative might be LDAP, um, though I haven't seen as much usage of that um, in recent years, but um, certainly we could support LDAP with the same architecture so that um, you could um, have your your local server looking what, what LDAP server is this user connected to, and then from there list which printers are available to this user and you know work the same way that profiles do just through LDAP. So uh, there's uh, a lot of opportunities there to to make this very friendly in the enterprise environment and eliminate the need for MDNS. Um, and it sounds like maybe we want to have some way to configure it so it doesn't use MDNS because you don't want the MDNS packets even going over the network. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm glad that uh, the, the same thing with profiles will pro probably be useful with printer applications too. That uh, uh, there is uh, there is a way uh, of defining URI which uh, uh, which will uh, connect to to the printer application and uh, uh, guys can uh, can put it into the profile and it will show in the into the in the dialog itself. So. I'm glad that uh, there is such URI for printer applications too. Yes. 
Yes, one thing is also when I have the local server, you tell that dbus will be one interface of it. Does it mean that the print dialog talks via dbus to cups and gets the option, sends the job and all by dbus? Yeah, the, the idea is that we would be able to have export a dbus API that would provide the same semantics as IPP, but would, you know, put it over the wire as dbus uh, elements. So that you'd be able to do the uh, a, a dbus call asynchronously to the local server to print a file to do whatever you need to do. Because this gets very similar with a, with a cups backend of the common print dialog backends, so that perhaps one can get there towards each other, and perhaps in the way that the print dialog that it does not need a common point dialog backends, but we have an a API which not only CUPS can use, but also other point technologies which we, which we make publicly available, more or less instead of, of common print dialog backends, or we, we move these together somehow, and then we do not need a CUPS backend for the common point dialogs any, uh, anymore, but the co common point dialog backend for, for CUPS is CUPS itself, the, right. the, the, the local server. Yeah, and I, I think- We only need to get the, the API being the same. And as yeah, the, and I, I think, as the print dialog backends are not not yet really deployed, we could also uh, do the approach that we go uh, the the API which you are uh, uh, working out. Yeah, I, I think the idea here we we make sure that we could end up with something where the local server, if you if you're building it for a Linux system with GNOME that. We actually build it with all the user interface uh, bits so that it's it's not just it's not just a, a dbus server, but it also presents UI and, and does all the things so that we have one executable that's handling what right now we have like uh, for the status monitor applets and all the other things could all be integrated into this one program. And then it's you know it just handles all the, the core printing stuff and and you know, it, it, everything is in one place to, to package up. Yeah, so that we get a wider sc scope than that, just the common print dialog backends, but all, all the interfaces which are there. Yeah, I'm just making some notes here, so. Yes, yes, perhaps. Perhaps you have also a look at the common print dialog backends and then we have to mix it all together to get the final thing out of it. Yeah. Because I think it would be not a nice idea if you have one, the dialog is talking to one dbus module and that dbus module is then talking to the, to the, <laughs> the next dbus module, which is the local cup server. Yeah, I think it, it, if we can get it all in one, architect. it would be a lot simpler, yeah. Yes, yes. And if someone comes, if some uh, net uh, cloud printing provider comes up with a new nice cloud printing service, he could then take your, uh, your uh, DBus API to be another backend for his backend for his te print technology, for his cloud print technology, and snap it up and put it in the Snap Store. And then the dialog sees both the cups local server and sees uh, the snap of this uh, cloud printing service if the user uses it and then the user can print to both without yeah. extra effort on the print dialogue side right okay um so um i briefly mentioned this earlier but um, this is is one of the things that I've I've been thinking about for a while here, and and um, it sounds like we've got uh, four roughly four um, uh, sub projects bundled into into cups right now. You have this the library portion that is used by everybody. And then you have the command line tools, 
and then this new local server and the sharing server, which is basically CUPSD right now in the, in the filter chain. Um, and if you look at how things are packaged up right now, um, the library is, is almost always packaged separately. And, and then usually the command line tools and the, and the, uh, and CUPSD are, are combined though. Sometimes, um, they're packaged separately. And then, uh, I think one or two of the distributions are also packaging CUPS LPD separately though. I, I think, uh, uh, we're rapidly approaching the time that that won't be necessary. Um, so, um, if we were to split this up, it does more closely match how things are packaged and it does decouple the server and the library. Um, so that, you know, when we're implementing features in the library, um, then our, our bug fixes, then, you know, we can just kind of pick them up in in the other projects, but at the same time, there may be things in the library that will depend on, say, the local server or the sharing server. Um, so I don't know if if uh, if we end up with you know a cups library 3.0 and a sharing server version 3.2. Um, I don't know that we would end up with that kind of a disparity, um, but you know it would give us that option like the command line tools might not change that often so you know, might still have 3.0 command tools that will work with any 3.x version of the cups library uh so i just don't know at this point you know i think we're going to discover pretty quickly you know how it would work best but if we were to split the thing up then we have this um this extra complexity you know for for doing release management, for doing uh, CI testing um, and user builds, because you have to build each of the components, um, you know that that it depends on in your in your whole uh, you know your GitHub action script and and stuff like that. So um, those those issues aren't insurmountable, but it just adds to the the workload. Um, so, uh, any, any thoughts, opinions? Yes, I think it's a go good idea to, to split, split them up. You, you could, uh, uh, really, uh, allow to, uh, to do independent release cycles. You have different release and can have different release managers, different coders. I think it's a good idea. I'm also splitting cups browsed from the le uh, west of cups filters, so I'm go uh, I'm going a similar way. Okay. Any other opinions? Objections? Currently not. Uh, I'm just processing it and after it. If I if I have some objection, I will write to the to the mailing list. But as uh, I just don't see currently no problem. But you never know. <laughs> All right. So I'll just record here tentatively. But are you going to re release them together? Because now you have to release together local server with Capsleep and command line tools, and then. Sharing well, server with, yeah. certainly we're going to have to, uh, when 3.0 comes out, they'll have to be, um, synced up and we might decide that we want to keep the, the feature releases synced up, but maybe, um, you know, we'll co come out with a cups library 3.0.1 and 3.0.2, but the command line tools might not need any changes. And so there'll be 3.0.0 and, and, you know, until there's a, a bug fix, um, so, you know, I, I, there's certainly going to be some, uh, synchronization there. Um, but, you know, as to, you know, do we need to do each patch release and lockstep? I don't know that we would need to do it that tightly, but, um, 
Yeah, but if you you know if you don't release them as a single package, you have problem with this version dependency. Yes, you have to track which version is compatible with. In the library, we version. have to use uh, the the API generation number. It's libcups.so.2 currently. It will get libcups.so.3, and when we have to bump this number, then I, I think then we have to sync. And yes, as long then, as we don't have to bump it because the API is not uh, changed too much, uh, then uh, we we do not not need so necessarily soon. But then the local server must must know which libcaps it needs, the libcaps it cooperates. Yes. Yeah. Well, like the dependencies, we can say you know, uh, cups local uh, requires libcaps 3.0 or greater. Um, yeah. And if we know that there's like a security bug that was in a subsequent uh, release of the CUPS library, then we could require uh, at least that version that has the security fix in it, um, you know, just to, to force people to update uh, components. Um, you know, as far as the, the packaging systems, you know, I think, think they're, they're um, sophisticated enough to be able to handle that sort of dependency. Um, and then, um, you know, if, if there's a, a feature that you need, then obviously you're going to have to say, like, uh, you're building a local server and you don't have uh, libcups 3.0 or higher, then, you know, it's not going to be able to build because that's the version that we target. But if if you're building a local server and then, you know, you've got 3.0.2 uh, of the cups library installed, that should be just fine because of the API versioning uh, and, and the binary compatibility stuff um, that's part of our, our, uh, our coding standards. Um, you know, any, any feature release, any patches to that feature release, you're still maintaining binary compatibility um, so that you're able to independently update those uh, bits. But um, I, I still agree, like there's going to be times when we're going to have to synchronize and say, okay, when we come up with 3.1, the 3.1 local server is probably going to require the, the 3.1 cups library. Um, but, you know, 3.1 X, not necessarily 3.1 O for, you know, local server 3.1 O and 3.1 for local server 3.1. I don't think we need to, to, to synchronize the patch releases, um, just the feature release number. And maybe just cheaper would be to have four components, but release always a package, yes. As you re uh, release always together a local server with CAPS library and command line tools and you know, other package, let's say, yeah. But we so also don't like, want to have a point release of the command line tools only saying in the change log a bump version number and nothing else. Uh, Sometimes it's just cheaper to have one, you know, larger package than track all the, all the possible dependencies. Yeah, and and I think just because we split up uh, cups into multiple uh, sub projects doesn't mean that somebody might not just package it all up in one thing. Because uh, there are people that do that with cups filters and and Go script and everything else to just kind of bundle it all together and say, look, here's a Raspberry Pi print server solution you can install. And the cup, you know, the cup snap is also an example for the, these as these interact in the file system. You have always to to put a, a complete printing stack into the cup so into the cup snap. So the cup snap contains cups, cups filters, and ghost script uh, uh, more or less because you cannot keep, snap them separately. So uh, this kind of packaging or often requires that you put several things together. But for example, there can later on happen that there's a cup snap for the sharing server and, uh, and a cup snap for the, for the local server. But I'm not sure if perhaps it, it, it contains both and the cup snap decides on startup what is the configuration what is the the system environment whether it fires up the local server or the uh, or the sharing server yeah well the idea with the, the local server is it's a user application and a sharing server is a system application or system service so in the con in the context of 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 the snap 
um, the the local server uh, serves a different function than the sharing server. Yes, the local server it would be would be uh, made available as a debug service, and so be trigger, uh, fired up by a point dialog, and and uh, the the sharing server in a snap it would be declared as a daemon and so the the snap starts it on startup as root right all right um in the interest of of keeping things moving here so um i think our consensus is uh we like the idea but we want to think about it some more offline and then we can kind of use the the printing architecture list as a discussion um, place um, after all this so that we can we can kind of firm these things up, but um, this isn't a decision we have to make today. Yes, yes. The printing arch architecture list is the golden master and I'm all, also, if there are some interesting di discussion in the end of the month, I'm linking the discussion always into the news so that people who are missing it on the list can always uh, discover it by the news posts. Okay. Um, okay, so as part of 3.0, yeah, we've got all these features and how do we package it and everything. Um, LibCups has had a, a major version of 2 for uh, 22 years, you know, ever since uh, Cups 1.1. 1. 1. And uh, uh, we've accumulated a lot of of uh, uh, cruft, I think would be a, a polite way to put it, um, for uh, functions that uh, either aren't particularly safe or don't do anything useful, um, or like in the case of the PPD APIs, we've had deprecated for 12 years now or something. Uh, and I'm just trying to get rid of this stuff. So. Um, we haven't been able to remove these things because that would break binary compatibility. And, um, you know, we're trying not to do that. So when we go to Cups 3.0, we have the opportunity to do some cleanup and um, we'd have to bump the, the major version of the library. So uh, that opens up some questions there, but, um, and, and there's certain APIs that have gotten numbered New versions like Cups Git Desk Two um, could be renamed to Cups Git Desk and and not have have the old versions. Um, and maybe we we do a whole lot of other cleanup to to make uh, uh, the naming and the usage more consistent and more appropriate for the 21st century. Since most of this API stuff I did um, back on uh, an old MIPS R2000A. Uh, processor you know an sgi workstation that was 16 megahertz or something like that uh you know and things have changed so uh we have the opportunity to to do some cleanup and 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 have something a little more modern but at the same time um do we still want to support applications that are written for the um version 2 uh shared library and how long do we want to do that? And, and, you know, how should that be packaged and so forth? Because there's a whole lot of uh, packages, say, on Ubuntu that depend on libcups2 devel or libcups2 period. And, and uh, you know, it'd be nice if, if those continue to work. And, you know, at the same time, being able to have uh, a newer version of the API for people to develop against. Um, so, you know, there's, there's different ways we could approach that, you know, just, oh, okay, we're just going to package the cups two, five, 13, or whatever the last patch of that would be, um, the libraries and, and put that in a package and, and call it a day. Um, so, you know, I guess the discussion point here is, you know, is this something we care about? Um, and if so, you know, let's decide what we're going to make the story so that we can, we can, uh, plan for it and, and make it happen. And if we don't care about it, then we can say that up front and then, you know, people can scream bloody murder or say, oh, okay, sure, great, no problem. I'll just update my code. And um, so, 
thoughts? So that we only need to get the GUI people to do the switch over with us to the new generation of cups and, the, and, and everything because uh, we do not want to have the disaster of the print dialogues and the temporary queues again. Uh, I think uh, GUI guys uh, uh, don't use such old uh, uh, old functions. Maybe my Python cups can can be the one which has some cups get printers or something like that. But uh, at least GTK use uh, only IPP uh, IPP calls. I think I, I, I uh, by, uh, by the that uh, they create IPP IPP request and send it to CUPS, so uh, they shouldn't be so, so much affected. But it would be great uh, if we had some list of uh, of of such functions which will go away or uh, will be renamed. Uh, so uh, us uh, so so then us uh, maintainers can do some stupid uh, uh, stupid queries uh, for source code and check if uh, if those functions uh, are used and uh, contact uh, contact the people who uh, who works on on the on those on those project to uh, uh, to say hey we are going to remove these please uh, please uh, migrate your code so it would be okay. great if uh, if we de if we do uh, such a thing in in the in the advance like create some list which uh, which uh, functions will go away and uh, do only some uh, simple simple grab check on on code for example i i did the uh, same thing when some uh, uh, some option from go script was removed so i uh, I checked all all packages in Fedora which uh, requires Go script and uh, checked for that option. So the same could be done uh, for cups in some script and automaton. Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and add an issue on on the cups project to track adding a migration guide to the documentation for 3.x, so that um, we can have a place to put all that. So. Um, like you get with a, a lot of other libraries and, and like uh, when I'm maintaining w websites and, you know, every time I look, oh, there's a new version of Bootstrap. Oh, it's a new major version. I have to figure out how to migrate things just to have something that show if you're using this, then uh, the replacement is that and, you know, uh, document it all. So that's a, a good point to have that uh, resource. And until I agree, if we can get uh, adoption of a Dbus API um, that handles doing the um, either the UI or just the the basic stuff for getting getting a list of, of printers, getting uh, the default printer, uh, getting the 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 capabilities, the options, options the all that stuff. Printer and receiving yeah, the job, think, receiving the list of jobs, sending yeah, the job, then, receiving the list of jobs, and so on. Yeah, I, I think that would insulate us and, and have to imagine that uh, DBus API would probably be better received than than a C API that um, doesn't integrate well necessarily with the, um, the GTK way of doing things. So, um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I have an in, issue for that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I haven't heard any objections to to bumping the major version and 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 cleaning up the library. Uh, are there any? Uh, it's okay for me. It's I've, okay I've for me. Okay. All right. 
I think I can move on. We're getting, uh, I think we got 10 minutes left. Sorry, um, Mike, can I have uh, one, one note? It would be great if that uh, migration guide uh, would have some uh, code snippets. Uh, snippets. If uh, uh, like uh, how how it looks in, in the in the old code and uh, how to program it in the uh, in the new, it would be great. Thanks. Sure. Okay, I got that captured for for the issue here. Okay, so. Um, Cups 3.0 necessarily, um, you know, with the local server, with the UI, the DBus APIs, all the integration with the desktop um, is much broader in scope. Um, so obviously we're going to need developers, but I think we're going to need more release managers to kind of coordinate this stuff than we would necessarily for um, for the previous releases to to get 3.0 out the door. Um, I think once 3.0 is out the door, then we're, we've done the major work and then we can focus on, on smaller, uh, goals. Um, uh, but 3.0 is, is like a, a massive undertaking in, in comparison. Um, so, uh, I just was kind of listing out what, what do we have for, for developers? What do we have for uh, on the desktop that we we can start with, and um, and obviously I you know I've done the work on Papal. It is a spooler. Uh, you know it's a self-contained service that runs in a library that you instantiate, and you can actually create multiple servers if you want from one bunch of code, um, and so it, it could probably serve as the basis. Um, of of uh, a new local server and a new sharing server, uh, and you know it might even be something that you know I don't know it, it might be something that could be uh, expanded so that it could work both you know for printer applications and for those things. Um, though I think it it would need a bit of of change to to make that happen. Um, but, you know, I think we have a lot of pieces, but we also need to get people to convert and integrate this stuff. Um, so it's kind of that, you know, we've, we've got challenges here and, um, and we've got stuff we can start with. Um, I don't know if anybody foresees any other issues that I haven't covered here so far. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we can um, make some point about uh, testing, like uh, improving test suits uh, in cups or even in cups filters, if if possible. Uh, maybe uh, Im improve the test suite. Uh, uh, so sometimes it uh, the test suite looks. Uh, uh like uh, it, it it's it is it is written in, in bash so maybe use some more macros or something like that and uh, make it more make it more readable at least in and at least for me as uh, uh when i looked in, in into it at the first time it was uh, uh, more more difficult to uh, get into it so maybe use some uh, i don't know we uh, I saw the Bickerly pro project. If you are, uh, if you know about it, it is available on GitHub or something else, which which can yeah. be used on Mac US. Yeah, I think one of the challenges that that the current test suite has had to deal with is is that there wasn't a single way to do the filtering. Um, you know, it's it's something that you know when when Cups was a monolithic thing and we bundled GhostScript and and did all the stuff in one place the test suite could could go run with a single set of expectations and then um you know with all of the changes to to, to uh you know supporting mac os and then breaking out cups filters and and doing all these other things um 
it's had to morph and, and change and, oh, look, you've got color D on this system, so we need to ignore those errors. And, oh, you know, we don't have color D on this other system, so we need to ignore errors that it's not there, but it's expected and, you know, things like that. So I think as we re-architect this and we get it set up so that uh, we have a more consistent implementation across the board, we should be able to do a cleaner test suite and and that will translate into something that's a lot easier to maintain than the current collection of shell scripts. Um, and I agree, it's, it's kind of, uh, even me going in to make a change, it's like, do I really wanna change this? Okay, uh, so that, that's, that sounds fine. Okay. All right, so uh, one of the other needs here is graphics libraries, and um, uh, this has been a long-standing problem, and one that that's, um, we have some options, but they're not ideal. Um, so I'll uh, start off, I did PDFIO because I needed to be able to uh, handle doing basic PDF filtering and and generation. But one of the things it doesn't support is rasterization because um, it's one thing to do uh, a PDF file library. You know, the format unfortunately has a lot of warts, but um, it's otherwise fairly straightforward to support. Um, but when you get to rasterization, then you open up a whole nother can of worms and and there's 10 different ways to do the same task in pdf unfortunately because you know different things come in and out of favor over time um so it's not while it has a a very um safe li license it's a pat patchy too with with the gpl exception just like cups um, it doesn't do everything we need it to do. Um, XPDF and Poplar are GPL2, and, and they have command line programs so that we can do the whole piping thing, which um, is doable, but it's not ideal because it introduces some, some external components that you're running and, and uh, performance limitations with, with pipes and you know, startup costs and, and all those sorts of things, but it's something we could do. It'd be in the short term could be something we do. Um, Move PDF is AGPL and it's really, it doesn't have a stable API. I, I, I did a, a implementation of, of the transforms to rasterize PDF uh, in the IPP sample project, um, but I'm constantly having to make changes every time there's a new release of Move PDF, the API changes in incompatible ways and then I update it and then you can only build the that software against the latest version and then I don't see that as 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 a an effective way to do plus it basically guarantees that you can't ship a an embedded solution um, and even shipping a um, uh, a desktop solution um, on a Linux distribution is problematic because a GPL applies to services and uh, it's, uh, I, I wish there was uh, the whole license landscape was, was simpler for, for open source. Um, and then the last one there, PDF -VM has all the functionality that we need and is BSD license, which is awesome. You know, it works with any license, um, but uh, you can only build it with the Chromium build uh, tools and the build system, which makes it really hard to integrate into um, uh, an open source printing system that's supposed to run everywhere. So, um, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any other. Uh, yes, you have forgotten Gold script. But Ghost uh, no, you have a similar situ script. situation. You have AGPL, 
And yeah. so you end up calling it by the command line tool that it's decoupled. And even that code. though is problematic because HGPL is, is designed to get around that escape hatch. Because as soon as you decide you're going to ship a, a printing solution based on cups that uses GhostScript, if you do it in a commercial uh, scope, then technically you're supposed to license from artifacts, right. which sucks. So, yes. uh, just capture this in my notes here. Uh, Mike, so uh, XPDF is uh, QPDF clone or something like that? Like well, XPDF is the code that Poplar is based on. Uh -huh. So uh, did you know about QPDF, that project which we use in Cups filters for, uh, for yeah for PD PDF to PDF filter? Yeah. So QPDF, I'm aware of it. It depends on Q, the QT, if I remember right, the you know, and and the C plus plus, and it it performs some of the same functions that PDFIO can pr perform. Um, I can't remember what the license was, but there was it was there were some issues that I found when I was looking at uh, some of the things I wanted to implement with it that it didn't do, and um, I'd have to look at my notes again to to see what that was, but but. Um, yeah, uh, QPDF is another one there, but uh, I don't know if it does anything more for us than than the others. Yes, one thing is Jay is very uh, Jay Berkenbild is very uh, cooperative. I have used it for PDF to PDF to get rid of unpublished uh, Poplar uh, APIs. This was the first step. Then the next step was form field in form flattening so that uh, PDF with flat with forms is con converted into a PDF without forms but with the forms with the fill in statically integrated and the third thing where I've used it is to make a filter which generates raster to PCLM and in all the three cases J, J uh, has added features to to QPDF so that it was suiting the appropriate projects. So if you come to him with feature requests, I think he would help you. And the other question which I have, you are, have written PDF.io. Would the three, the three projects where I have used it in CUPS filters, would they be covered also by PDF.io for especially the form flattening? And also the the page management in PDF to PDF. So it can do the the page management. So you can do page ranges. Um, you can do text yeah. to PDF, and and an image to PDF. It has built-in support for for basic text handling as well as as embedding JPEGs and ping files. Um, it will not do the form flattening. Just because that requires rasterization. Um, Somehow Jake uh, succeeded it in QPDF. I well, didn't know that it requires rasterization. So well, does it does, you don't have to rast... convert it to a bitmap, but you have to you have to be able to process and add to the the page dictionary. So I, it might be possible to add that to PDFIO, but I haven't done it. I haven't looked at at what would be required to yes to so add this that. is a feature request okay yes and the other thing is uh, uh generating pclm as pclm is a, a subset of pdf and so we have used qpdf for this too yeah and you can absolutely uh generate uh pclm with with pdfio um it, you know you'd have to write the code to actually you know send out the image streams and so forth but but you know as far as you know generating the pdf and everything it it will it will do one that that will be a uh, 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 piece pdf io also capable of streaming out the pclm instead of writing the whole thing into a file and then only be being able for the next filter to use it when the whole thing is there because 
the streaming of PCLM. M, I'm, uh, it could come in useful if you write printer application and want to stream, for example, to a PDF printer. A PDF printer also understands PCLM, and so you could solve perhaps also some streaming problems and not only the original pur purpose of having PCLM for a PCLM printer, as any PCLM printer also understands Apple Waster. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what I'd suggest, go ahead and, and file uh, bugs on the PDFIO website for these feature requests. Do a separate one for the form flattening and for the PC LMM uh, streaming. Yes. And, and I'll, the next feature request is migrating it into, open, into the open printing site. I hope there are not, no sponsors hanging on it. Um, I don't know, but I will check. Yes, yes. Because then, if it's perhaps more lightweight and not C++, it could and and and, and uh, fulfilling all the features I mentioned, it could get a replacement to QPDF, as QPDF is probably more heavyweight and also more difficult to maintain the filters when they are C++. Yeah, um, one of the things though with PDFIO is it it has a lot of uses outside of printing. So I don't know if it makes sense to be part of open printing or not, but certainly um, anything that is specific to printing, uh, we want to keep in open printing. Yes, Scan, scanning stuff is already moving in. Uh, so open printing is not pure printing anymore. No, but, but as far already... as like PDFIO, uh, I'm going to be using in the next version of HTML doc, for example. Um, oh, yes. And there's other other projects that need to be able to produce or consume PDFs that have nothing to do with printing or scanning, and and so, you know, that's I I didn't make it just for printing. It's just it happened to be okay. Well, we need it here, and 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 I'm going to need it in these other projects I'm working on. So. I guess I'll go ahead and bite the bullet and, and do it. Yes. And, yes. Um, so it's like an external library like QPDF. Right. All right. Um, we are right up against our time. So let me just uh, cycle forward here, um, make sure we get to the other stuff here. So um, release manager, um, we had talked a little earlier till um, what I'm thinking here is, is uh, we probably, if we're going to break this up, we probably want to have two release managers, one to manage more of the desktop side of things and one to manage the, the, the um, uh, lower level stuff. And um, so, do you want to split the responsibilities with me and, and we'll, we'll divvy it up by project uh, as we get closer? I, I think so that we can, could do so. Okay. Okay. And then um, my proposed schedule here is to start development a little bit early um, just because um, for 2.5, you know, some of the key things are around OAuth and, and uh, X509 management, um, which we're also going to need in 3.0. And it would give us a little more time to develop and, and test and prototype things in parallel, uh, maybe with some Google Summer of Code stuff. Um, so uh, thinking like for, for uh, it start in January, uh, create new projects is needed so that, and, and Establish branches so that we can develop in parallel. And then um, once 2.5 is out, then we can focus solely on 3.0 development and then look at uh, an October 2023 timeframe for a, uh, a final uh, production release of 3.0. Um, and we can start like betas in, in March or something like that um, so that um, we can have an extended beta period test. Uh, test uh, uh, time. So that uh, 24.04 LTS will be the first one uh, with uh, CAPS 3.0. Right.
So any objections, any comments on this uh, schedule? Does this sound reasonable to people? Yeah, this seems to be good. Yes, think, I think so too. Uh, we get, get us a good bunch of good students and we will do it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, and then Till, if you are release manager of 2.5, then that kind of dovetails pretty nicely. You'll be able to, to keep the 2.5 and the 3.0 uh, development in sync. And then uh, maybe I can focus on the 3.0 specific stuff that, that's unique uh, and, um, and we can keep things coordinated. Yes, yes, we can do so. All right, uh, so uh, we're at noon and and uh, this is the last slide. So um, any any other things people want to discuss or have questions about? Um, I kind of sent to people we'd look uh, see if there's any any questions on on the chat, but um, I still have yet to get logged in and I got an, e an email from from somebody at Linux Foundation apologizing that that uh, they got the account information out late and none of the logins are working. Um, so, yes, the syncing gonna... of our of our chat in the room is not working. Yeah, there seems to be I've some looked... problem in the server. Yes, I've looked on the native side. No one has posted there. After my initial posting, there's no new post. Yeah, I, I still haven't gotten logged in, so I have a I sus, sneaking suspicion that nobody's able to get into the into the chat server. Yeah, uh, I, I cannot log uh, in into the chat. It's just uh, rolling over over, and nothing is shown. So yeah, yeah, there is a problem communicating with the home server. Please try again later. <laughs> yes, you are trying into Matrix LPC events. Right. Uh -huh. ah, yes. Because I have, it, I have it open, but I've logged in yesterday and it's open since then. Okay, so um, okay, no. oh, yeah. if there's no other discussions, I think on the schedule we have a break now. Right, so we have a 10 minutes break. Okay, yes. and I actually have to drop off. Um, I have to pick up my vehicle and I have to vote. So uh, I, oh. uh, I don't know uh, how quickly I'm going to get back to this. Um, so if if uh, if there's any anything that comes up while I'm not around, if you can uh, please remember to make a note to send to me. Um, but you will come back. I'm going to come back as soon as I can. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I hope. I, I think voting will not take three hours. I hope you have decided in whom you vote. <laughs> well, yeah, I already know, but it's just how long, how long a line I'm going to have because, because uh, uh, so. a lot of people waited till the last minute here. But um, yes, in Canada. Yeah. Sure, Mike. So if there are any any specific questions, I'll keep a note of that. And uh, once you are back, maybe we can take that up or maybe uh, we can uh, take it up via email, whatever suits. OK. All right. Thanks. OK, I'm going to drop off for the moment, but sure, uh, sure. I'll, I'll be back uh, back on when I get back. Sure, Mike. Thanks okay. for your presentations. Yes, sure. all the best. Safe Canada. <laughs> okay, talk to you in a little bit. Still, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I'm returning so, now. Yeah, so uh, you, I think you can start. We are already late by 30 minutes. Yes, yes. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, now...
I will be talking about the print management uh, GUI. And uh, as we have heard from Mike, we have a lot of architecture changes in CUPS. The most important is that we do not we do not have uh, uh, cup skews anymore. Uh, we, we do not have uh, configure cup skews anymore with PPD files and we have print applications and so on. And therefore we will also need, uh, need changes in, in the print management GUI or also or to say uh, printer setup tools. So the DNEC, it means also that I have a big feature request for, for system config printer. And so we have, uh, what we have currently is we have a printer setup tool. Like, and the, this is, for example, the web interface of CUPS or the command line tools, LP admin, LP info, and LP start, the system config printer, and uh, which is a GUI tool, and the other GUI tool, which most users probably currently use because it's integrated in GNOME's control center is the print module of it. And we have also another completely different type of printer setup tool, which is CUPS Browse D, which is a daemon, which automatically creates CUPS queues for printers, which it discovers, discovers on the network. You can configure it so that it clusters the queues and so on. But it's also a printer setup tool as it creates CUPS queues, only that it does it fully automatically. So, all of these tools, they control CUPS, the one in CUPS stem on CUPS D. You, they typically, most of them list the available printers and, and uh, discover printers on USB, on the network, on parallel port, and so on. They also list drivers which are installed on the machine. And they use this more, more or less uh, automatic or manual as the user wishes to create print queues. And they are also available to list the print queues which are already created and to, to list jobs which are uh, printed on each of the queues. It has the possibility uh, that you can modify the queues, right click on the queue entry and see a menu of settings like uh, pause and restart set default option settings and and so and, and other things and you have uh, you, you you can also at least with some printer setup tools do, uh, uh, modify some server settings like for example switch to debug mode or tell whether every user can can uh, a killer job or, or only the user who has sent it and, and, and things like that. This is the printer setup tools which we know. And now in the new architecture, they must be different. The new architecture, we will have in, in, in we, we will get into the new architecture into two ways. CUPS 3.0, but until uh, Ubuntu 24.04 LTS in, in April uh, 2024, it takes still a little bit of time. And so another thing where we will perceive the new architecture pretty soon, pretty now, is the CUPS snap. Is the CUPS snap, is the CUPS the current CUPS 2.3.3 in a container. And so this CUPS, even if it internally could work with PPDs, we cannot give it a, a we cannot create a queue, we cannot install PPDs to it and filters to it, printer drivers to it, because it's in a container and we cannot add files to it. So this CUPS already now needs printer applications as printer drivers. 
in queues in this cups, you can create queues. The web interface of the cups networks. Queues in this cups, you, you usually would not create manually, but you would let this cups create its own temporary queues or use the built in cups browse of the cups nap. So this cups nap beha behaves this way already like the new architecture. And therefore, in both cases, we need changes on the printer setup tool. All printers are driverless IPP printers. CUPS does not, does not create, in CUPS we do not create queues with a PPD and a filter anymore. CUPS sees on the network IPP, driverless IPP printers. These can be native network printers, but they can also be printer applications. But all the time, it's a driverless IPP printer, and CUPS creates a temporary queue for it. And so, so we in in this in this net CUPS or in CUPS three dot zero, we do not need to create many queues manually. So the queues which CUPS had, have are all automatically created by CUPS itself. And so the admi administration action moves away from CUPS and will be, will be done on the basis of the IPP printers. You put IPP printers in the network, you get into the web interface of the IPP printer and tell which hosts uh, should see it and whether it, the IPP printer should be actually an IPP printer. Or if you have a printer application, you connect the printer application uh, with your, your physical USB a network or parallel or any non-driverless printer. And and so your tasks in the printer setup tool are the following. You list the IPP services which your system is seeing by, uh, by DNSSD with Avahai. Is these are the relevant printers which your local system, or, or, where you will be able to print on, on your local system. And to manage this IPP services, you will not have uh, you will not really have buttons to 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 edit them directly as cups queues, but you will have most importantly a button to open the web interface of the IPP service so that you can uh, tell which papers are in your trays uh, via the web interface or with or connect a printer application to your printer by your web interface and so on. And Another, another approach to, to configure and, and manage an, an, an IPP service, IPP system service. This is a protocol where you, where you talk IPP to your IPP device to, to manage it. So you get also um, a button which opens a pop-up window in which you talk with your IPP service uh, by IPP system service with a GUI, you don't do not need to talk IPP. In the GUI, you, you see buttons and widgets which represent your IPP service and its configurable settings. And another task of the new printer, printer setup tool is discover non-driverless printers and uh, make them working on your system. So you can you have you can still have a non-driverless printer. They get more rare and with the time, but there are still a lot around. And of some brands, they are of su such good quality that you you can print on them as long as e eBay sells you toner for them, and some eBay seller tells you toner for them, and so. Uh, you discover these printers the usual way on the parallel port on USB on or network via SNMP. And 
And then you want to have them pointing and what you have to do to, for that is not to install a driver consisting of PPDs and filters, but a pointer application. Either the pointer application can already be installed. It could check with the installed pointer applications whether the pointer application supports it. Puppel has, the, uh, has the, the appropriate interfaces for doing so. I've taken care of it. And uh, the other thing is you do not have a suitable pointer application installed, so you would need to find the correct pointer application on the Snap Store. Uh, and about this, I will tell more later. So this is the idea how a printer setup tool should look like in the future. Phil, can I have a quick question? So the yes. uh, basic idea of uh, disco of discovering of that non-driverless printers is uh, to run some uh, some, uh, some classic classic cups backend, and uh, after that uh, you will have some database. Uh, of which uh, which printer is supported by which printer application? Uh, the the architecture, the exact architecture, we must still determine. The approach of using the the cups backends, or at least their code. Perhaps we can even uh, we, perhaps we can even convert them to filter functions. These uh, architectural these uh, uh, details we have to look uh, look after later. We will do the discovery, so we collect the device IDs of of the printers which are available to us, uh, and then we must somehow find out which printer application supports this printer. For the installed printer application, it's rather easy. We can send the device ID to the printer application and the printer application tells us whether it supports the printer or not. But it gets more difficult if, you don't, if we don't have the suitable printer application installed and there we must Work together with uh, with uh, with uh, people, with uh, with the developers of the Snap Store, and I've already put a feature request there, but we did not really come come on uh, go, uh, went on with that afterwards. A feature request of sending hardware of of being able to to send hardware signatures to the Snap Store, and by this way finding snaps suitable for this hardware. This I already suggested. I have simply to talk with the people again that we really need this feature. And an interim solution would be that while we take the open printing website, the good old printer database, and add linking to printer applications in the Snap Store to it, as, as we really do not, do not need this old li linking to LPD packages anymore, we could replace it by, uh, by linking to snaps in the snap store but the the best would be if i get if if i i succeed to get together with the snap store people that they at hardware signature support because this does not only help printers it helps also scanners and any kind of hardware because for any kind of hardware it can happen that a suitable snap will be put into the snap store and this will be the way to get it supported so uh, these are the things, and more, uh, I will talk about the more details later. I, this was now only the basic idea, uh, how the printer setup tool looks like. And now we come to the similarities. We have, I've shown you how the old uh, printer setup tool looks like and the new one. And in the old one, you, we, uh, we, you all remember that you had the main window which showed us the cup skews. This main window will in the future not show cup skews, but the IPP services. And, and instead of buttons to modify the, the, the properties of the queue, we will have buttons to get to the web service, to the web uh, interface and or to the IPP system service uh, window. 
to uh, be able to, to uh, uh, manage this service. And our main window had the add printer button in former times. We can still have this add printer button, but we should all, perhaps all tell that this add printer button is only needed when the printer is not driverless, as the driverless printers appear by themselves. And the add printer button fires up the add printer window. In, and in former times, the ad printer window showed us the wizard, which uh, listed the auto-discovered printers, the auto-discovered by the CUPS backend printers. And in the next step, either auto-assigned a driver to it, uh, known by the list of PPDs on the system, or it showed us the list of drivers to manually choose it and created a cup skew. Now the ad printer window will be different. It will list for us as, uh, at, in the first step again, the non-driverless printers, but only the non-driverless printers. If it discovers for a printer, if it has all, also a, driver, uh, a, a driverless approach to use it, at least in basic mode, this printer will not get listed. In expert mode, it could get listed because some people, perhaps when they have a driverless printers, they find out that, for example, Guten print prints in a better quality than driverless on it. This is not a good sign for the manufacturer of the printer, but it can happen. And so we have the non-driverless printer list. We choose one, and in the next step, it will show us the list of installed printer applications. It's not a long list. There are not many printer applications around which support this printer. And, and so we can choose a printer application. And independent whether we, we find printer applications which support this printer or not, we will also have the option to search the internet or search the Snap Store for printer applications. And as I already told, either the Snap Store must be must add a feature to to uh, to uh, search by hardware uh, signature, which is the better uh, which is the better approach or as an interim approach or an approach if they really, really, really do not want to add this feature, we must go through the open printing web server and this should uh, uh, provide linking to the Snap Store which, which, uh, which printer applications support which printers. And so this would be the next step, and this would be uh, uh, the new version of the ad printer window. This would be the, the basic de design, the transition between the old and the new printer setup tool when we are only thinking about printers. There could, one could even have hybrids in some way. For example, if we are in situations where we have a mix up between the two architectures or where we have a printer setup tool which should be working independent whether the underlying system is one of the old architecture or the new architecture. But these are the two, two, two uh, the difference and similarities between printer setup tools. And now, in the new architecture, printer setup tools show IPP services. And IPP services are not necessarily only printers. IPP services are typically also scanners and, uh, and fax out. Fax out is uh, that you print into a special queue and uh, the, the, the job is not printed locally, but sent as a fax to some, some, uh, to some recipient. Uh, 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 and therefore, it's very similar to printing, but a required attribute for fax out is the fax number of the destination. But otherwise, it's the same as printing. 
And naturally, it has different options and properties as the print engine in your uh, multifunction device. Usually, the quality of pucks is much lower. So we have three functions. They all can be they all can be listed in as IPP services, and they, and if if they are provided by a multifunction device, they should be listed together so that the user gets uh, does not get confused and sees uh, the list of his physical devices and what uh, and what capabilities they have, what services they provide. And once having all these services listed by the printer setup tool, it should on a scan service naturally also uh, show, uh, also allow to configure the scanner either it does not need its own its own uh gui magic for it it either uh, gets we either get uh through I, uh, we either use ipp system service or the web interface but we get we have an approach now that we also handle scanners in the printer setup tool so uh, GNOME control center module should, should be renamed from printing to printing and scanning. So what we already have work on on the new new generation of printer setup tool has already started in the last two google summer of codes the main window was subject of a project this year G, gui for listing and and managing available ipp print and scan services or dns SD advertised network serv services in general by Divya Shell. And he has created a GTK plus based GNOME control center module to replace the current printing module or to mix up with it. And it discovers the services using Avahai. And it also takes care, for example, that duplicate services are removed, for example, IP, IPv4, IPv6, and also the different, uh, so the different network interfaces, ETH, ZOO, Wi-Fi, and, and whatever. And, and so it is taken uh, care that every physical service appears only once. And it also sorts the, the services of the same physical device together and con contains already a button to open the device's web interface. So this is the first module which we have. Every module probably needs to be somewhat refined until it is uh, in, in, uh, until we can put it to, to general use. But it is also a very important step which we already have. And the other module which we got already, we got a year ago in uh, Google Summer of Code uh, 2020. It's the Linux GUI application to admin uh, multifunction devices using the IPP system service by Lakshai Bandlish. And he, he did a GUI it also lists the devices we probably so we probably will not use that part or or use part a mix parts what of of that with the new one depending on we uh, how we exactly end up but it opens dialogues so that you can uh, manage a device by the ipp system service it does not do everything at least it, it manages printers and and uh, and, and and this will be uh, the the base for the I, ipp system service pop up in the in the new printer setup tool 
so now go we go on what what we still need to complete our printer setup tool and there the most important is 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 it what i already mentioned and the tool to guide the user setting up non-driverless printers and scan and also scanners naturally because they get into it as they are also ipp services So I remind you also that the scanners you are, co you are familiar with and using with SANE, we will later create scanner applications so that we have the, and, and then uh, these then scanner drivers and printer drivers all, all lead you to having IPP services. And so we have the, this will be the add printer window, which I have mentioned. And it is, and we dis, de detect, discover all available non-driverless uh, printers, which and and so and and first we will find and we will find printer applications for them. As I already told, first the already locally installed one, and second we will look up in the Snap Store, and. We want to allow the user an easy setup of the printer printer within the printer application. So we can think about trying it fully automatic so that uh, we tell, we give the printer application a command for for auto adding uh, the, the printer the printer of the given ID and or we can do it also, also manually by calling the web interface of the printer application. And we can also do it fully manual by having our own GUI and translating the button presses into, into, into commands which we send to the, to the, to the printer application either by IPP or by or by a command line. And to and also to remind you to not to not get anything confusing, we have already in the in the open printing mailing list decided on that printer applications do not auto set up printers on its own on startup. So that when you simply take a printer application from the Snap Store and install it, that it does not install all the printer it supports because we can easily get a confusion as we, we uh, several printer applications can support a common printer. And so the printer uh, uh, appears as different uh, as more than one IPP service which is not easily to sort apart either that the printer that we, that uh, the main window of our printer setup tool cannot distinguish out of the printer application that behind them is the same printer and and also we do not know which printer application is the better one and this can even differ from from printer to printer. Gutenprint, for example, is very good for, for, for Epson inkjets, while for HP lasers, HP LIP would be better. So. Uh, Theo, uh, do we have uh, some idea uh, for, uh, like, if you install once, uh, some printer application and you will create a key uh, let's, well we will create a I, ipp service for for, for your non driverless uh, non driverless printer uh, can we somehow make the printer application remember that that, that we set uh, set such uh, uh, ipp printer so then uh, uh, then uh, i uh, then printer application will start up uh, at at the uh, at the start of operating system because yes, yes. the printer application if you connect a printer to a printer application either you do it in the web interface of it perhaps you have already tried my printer applications i hope so 
Sorry, still I didn't have time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and in, if you connect a pointer with a pointer application, either by setting the pointer up in the web interface of the pointer application, or by talking externally to it by the command line or by IP then the print application remembers it. The print application has a state file where the configuration of the printer application is saved. So the print application remembers it. Do you, and so if you boot the next time of, or if you restart the printer application, or if the snap store sends you automatically a new version and therefore the snap store restarts it then for you, then always always the printer which you have set up once is conserved and so uh it does not go away until you remove it manually okay so uh, when i open uh print dialog it it will be showed by, by default once yes, I... yes the printer application is an ip is an ipp service and so uh, cup, cups will discover it automatically create a temporary queue in the print dialog if it is on pace with cups it will see this see, see this print and list it and you will be able to print on it and uh, what will bring up uh, the print the print application during the startup uh, ah, of the printer system. application is a is a system daemon which starts by oh. itself during startup. Okay, yeah. And snap so, system so, daemons system do it also. So the, the, the SnapD guys have already taken care of it. The, the, the daemons are supported in snaps. Yeah, because I only played with LPrint, which uh, Mike wrote, and uh, it didn't have any any systemd file or something like that. Uh, so yes. I yes. thought uh, uh, the PostScript printer application and and other printer applications are uh, based on the on the same principle. Same yes, idea. The point, yes, the printer, the post printer application, and, and any later ones, the ones. Uh, which I have written, the ones which come from open printing in the Snap Store, all these ones, they once have a systemd uh, service file. So if you don't snap them and run them uh, stand alone, run them bare metal on your machine, they they would also auto start when you when you boot. And if you use the snap either from the Snap Store or you re, you rebuild the Snap with the Snapcraft YAML which comes in on or in, with the source code of the printer applications. Then they also start because in the Snap they are declared a daemon. Ah, okay, thanks. So try them out. There are already three, and tomorrow there will be a fourth one. Guten print will be the fourth one. Yeah, I'm, I'm still stuck uh, in managing, uh, managing, uh, getting uh, others know that there will be some changes in cups, and uh, try to find the best way how to uh, how to spread it uh, uh, even to uh, to enterprise enterprise users. So yes, I'm yes, I'm, to... I'm filling up you with a lot of work. Tell your manager that uh, Red Hat needs two guys for printing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes, yes, Mike and me are filling up with <laughs> you with a lot of work. Yeah, I, I can, uh, I, I can feel that. Yeah. <laughs> so, going on. We must put all these three things together, the, the main window, list, uh, uh, IPP service list and manager, the IPP system service pop-up, and also the non-driverless printer pop-up. And then we need to complete the IPP system service GUI. For example, we must support scanners and other services, and we and we need also, for example, in the IPP system service uh, module, a more IPP requests than the one it is already capable to do. And then what very, very, very important, 
the best is to get it upstream get it upstream we are five minutes before the end before switching to something nicely new also from me so get get into the gnomes control center upstream so that so that it replaces the current printing module and we get the new printing and scanning module which uses the new architecture ideally up, upstream should carry both an end on build install or best on runtime it chooses the correct one so that the so that it fits to the print to the systems systems print architecture and so that we get a nice uh a nice that we get get, get a nice new printing and, and scanning experience so that's all is there any more discussion in the last four minutes or so uh which we have No one worth our distro, man, uh, distro maintainers. Denek, Thorsten, no one has any doubts and any suggestions and so on. Well, I I had several questions, so I think yes, so. yes, you have. Ah, <laughs> yes, it's great that we have done already a lot of discussion on the way. It's much better than than uh, collecting everything for the end, especially as our as uh, the core part of this conference is discussion. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yes, as as very very important is is all this all this gui and we need really really perhaps at, at red hat someone could do that too we, we nearly really really need coders for gui because gui is a lot behind uh the 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 top of the development of printing the pace of printing seems to be much faster than the pace of 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 printing support in the gui especially you, uh, you know about uh, CUPS virtual queues and the most of the print dialog still do not support them as, and they already exist for years because they won't use the wrong API. And also printer setup tools, they worked well up to now, but now we have a lot of work to switch them over to the new architecture. So we really need a week find students for us and as Denek look at uh, find at Red Hat, uh, uh, tell your managers that we use uh, need GUI people to get to get the GUI on this uh, uh, up up with a new architecture so that we do not need to uh, to end up with workarounds like Cups Brausti. Well, silly uh, command line tools are still are still the option. <laughs> <laughs> what you uh, like? You uh, want, we want to have this. We want to to get that consumers and normal office users. Uh, you will use the Linux desktop, and they don't want to use the command line. They are thinking. Control, uh, they are thinking about us that we uh, we provide to them. You press Control P, and we do the rest. Sorry, it it it, it was a joke only. Sorry. Yes, yes, <laughs> because in former times, uh, as photography when start was turned to be a consu uh, some a thing for consumers by like Kodak, they ad advertised with you press the button and we do the rest, and this was when Kodak started to develop the films for the user and so the user only needed to take pictures with their camera and and it was easy for them and now we at open open printing and in generally at linux we want that the user can simply click click in the dialogues and the printer out comes out and therefore we do all this nice work at open printing and <laughs> Therefore, 
And so this is how the users are thinking. And this we need to de de deliver for the users instead of, of, of telling them, if you want to print, you have to use the command line. Because <laughs> no one could make a consumer taking pictures of, 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 of their vacation when the camera manufacturer tells to them, if you want to see your photos, you have to develop them by yourself. <laughs> Uh, regarding cooperation with uh, uh, with GTK, I think it would be it would be great if uh, uh, we had uh, already someone uh, who would uh, go. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Avik. Yes, yes, yes. I let you tell. Uh, uh, no, no problem. Zemek, I it's think only so. a minute. It's only a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then sure. I will I switch think... over to the print dialog. Uh, like uh, we we need someone uh, who will be in the direct contact with the uh, with the GTK team because uh, the last time when we were trying to uh, trying to uh, get uh, common printing di uh, dialog backends into GTK uh, there was a communication disruption because. Uh, because the person who wrote the, those backends uh, stopped communicating, so uh, we would need someone uh, who will uh, spend some time with the GTK guys to get this, this done. So the, yes, yes. And uh, G I GUI is not really my thing. With the latest code of the someone uh, and update it so that you have a better testing base and. Also, there will be changes because, I, as I, you heard already from Mike, I will probably have some merger with uh, with Mike's API ideas and the common printing dialogue backends. But we should uh, uh, have a look and find coding task force to go get on with the common printing dialogue backends. And this is also what what is the subject of the next session. Denek? Uh, yeah, was, uh, uh, it was a question for me. But... No, no, no. I will all, 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 all only say that it is very important that we need coding task force on the common print dialogue backend because we will really actively go on soon with it. Mm, yeah, mm, maybe we can. Uh, we can have some task in uh, Google Summer of Code. Yes, because... yes. We tried a lot and it was difficult. It would be nice if we get it uh, started as soon as possible. Mm. Well, uh, I, uh, if uh, I myself, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not for, I don't like the, that much uh, uh, graphical interfaces, so uh i'm not probably not the guy for for this and uh i only know some context in gtk and uh well some guys only one yes and yes he, yes he, he is overloaded to marek yes so. yes yes Talk so with we, him, we must get forward with it and try to find people within gtk within wetted so that we get on with it. GUI is very important. Hmm. I, I agree. It's uh, it's it's important, but I'm not current. I don't yeah, currently yeah. It's know. It's not that... you, you uh, who, who should code it. Uh, hmm. For you, it's better <laughs> better that you perhaps uh, 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 will more look into the printer setup tool side. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, I myself, I would, I would rather uh, go for cups or or something like that. I, yes, yes. Uh, I and got the uh, release management of two dot four, or or some or or some uh, you know, some uh, feature implementations or something like that. Yes, yes, uh, yes. yes. Coding for cups will also be. Uh, everyone should contribute. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, now right. let us go to the common print dialog backends. And 
we have already talked i've already talked with mike shortly about it and now i will uh, introduce what we have and what's the intention and so on so uh, the common print dialog backends the idea the idea is uh, that we take the responsibility of the GUI toolkit developers of the GUI toolkit uh, projects to support print technologies like CUPS, IPP, or any kind of cloud printing from them and centrally by open printing and for cloud print services by the individual cloud print services, we provide this, the implementation for the support for the print services and by a debus interface between the print dialog and the implementation for the support for the print service, the back end, there will be a communication by debus. And so the print dialog can cope with any service. And if something changes in the service, when the service gets updated with the, with the pace of the developers of the service, the the backend will get updated and so all print dialogues have sudden do suddenly support the newest features of the of the print print technology without waiting for the long cycles of two years or so of the GUI toolkit and without needing to rely on distro patches to get it faster because distro maintainers also do not have much time to 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 muck around with print with print technologies and also that the car the 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 cloud print provider can provide his the support for his service in the snap store as a snap which works in uh, with with the debus between the dialog and the uh, and the back end so therefore we have the print dialog the common print dialog backends common uh, the same backends for all dialogs independent of the of the individual graphical uh, uh, user interface toolkit i got inspired by doing uh, backends and so and and so we overcome these problems that Toolkit, uh, toolkit developers uh, think printing is not very, very important to put not much time into it. Developers are, do, do not have time and so on. And so we can solve, uh, we, we should be able to solve these problems easily once, uh, once uh, the interface is, is implemented in the toolkits. And, and so the idea is, is, as I already mentioned, in former times we tried it with a common point dialogue, providing the whole dialogue, but we had to do it for, for each toolkit individually. And so it was a lot of coding work and we were not able to get enough people together or to get some funding to, to, to uh, implement all this. And so therefore this, this project has, has failed. It was a big project in open printing, uh, introduced on my first printing summit on 2006 in Atlanta, but uh, some years later it failed. And later, some, some more years later, a week, he uh, remembered me at this project and uh, suggested to, to revive it, but I was uh, not feeling well with reviving this project and came to another idea. As at the same time, I had to fix a bug in the GTK print dialogue, not in the GUI, but in the communication with CUPS. I discovered that the GTK print dialogue has backends for the different print technologies but the, these were dynamic libraries they worked they they itself were not gui but they worked only with the gtk print dialog and were probably not easy to port, port to qt or, or LibreOffice. and so i came to the idea not putting as in the old project 
the debus between uh, the application and the print dialogue, but put the debus between the print dialogue and the print type technology. And this was already in the age where Snap was there, and I was already thinking all Snap and trying to and uh, uh, and and trying to find the best architectures which are snappable which could could be which could communicate between containers and were not connected by files and dynamic libraries which does not work from container to container and so so we have the dialog itself, which still belongs to the GUI toolkit and is maintained by the GUI toolkit. We have the GUI independent backends for each print technology. Cups is one, print to file is one. In the time when I came to the idea, it was also Google Cloud Print, but it can be any cloud printing service which would come up in the future and so on. And then the connection between the print dialog and the back, is, back end is DBus. And, D, and as DBus is, uh, works nice on if, if, the, uh, dia, if, if the two executables, the dialog and the back end, are running on the same machine, it's very common. And DBus communication can be done between two sandbox packages like Snaps. And and then we have and then then we create backend and frontend libraries so that the that the maintainers of the GUI toolkits and the maintainers of the backends can easily easily uh, uh, write these backends and uh, for, for for these uh, backends and frontends for this DBus interface and. And uh, the backend has to be, and, and the idea, uh, one important thing is the backends have to be maintained by the maintainer of the print technology. For CUPS, it's open printing. And if we have some new global, count global cloud print backend, then global cloud who provides it has to provide provide this service has to provide this backend and ideally puts into the snap store and if someone wants to to use global cloud print he simply downloads the backend from the snap store and installs it and then his dialogue shows the printers who he is managing with global cloud print service and then we and the print dialog detects all installed backends. This is easy with with the DBus. They are DBus services, and the DBus subsystem simply uh, simply uh, uh, discovers them. And so the dialog can shout into the DBus list all printers and all backends and answer with their queues. And so you see all the printers which the user has access to. And, and the user sees all and as all and as ideally all the print dialogues use the common print dialogue backends. The user sees with every application, independent with which toolkit it is written, he sees the same printers, and so he does not need to convert and transfer files between applications so that he can print on his global cloud service printer because this printer is visible in all print dialogues. And so if the maintainer of the print technology same changes something, for example, Google, so for example, Glo Global Cloud Print uh, finds a new nice security feature with passwords and not passwords with fingerprint reading then he uploads it in the snap store the snap store automatically updates the back end on your machine and you have this feature automatically and this this is a nice idea if we have the people who code it similar with mike's ideas we need the people who code it 
and when we and uh, then we the implementation has already started in the Google Summer of Code 2017 because the idea came up in me in 2016 or beginning 2017. So I opened a project on uh, or even more than one project on on uh, the Google Summer of Code, and and we we got a really good student picking up the main project of the libraries. And so she implemented the libraries in the cups back end. And here, here the drawing you see, this she has uh, uh, do, this she has drawn by hand and scanned and put into her final report of the Google Summer of Code. And this is the scheme how it works. You see in at the top, at the top that you have the user application, which which is here. You, you click on print, then the dialog opens, and the dialog uses the uses the back, it uses the front end library of the common common uh, print dialog backends. It's shouting into the dbus, and then you have the dbus services who are who are using the backend library. So they understand what, what the print dialog is shouting and they answer with their printers. And when the user selects one, one printer, the backend uh, responsible for that printer answers with the capabilities and user settable options so that the, dis the dialog uh, displays it. The user sets the options and clicks print and the job is then sent to the correct Backend and the backend passes on the job to the printer. And, and so and, and, and these libraries they are available on the open printing GitHub. There's one 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 repository which is the front end and backend library. It's from Nilan Jana. And also the cups back end from Nilan Jana is also there, uh, and uh, and also a, a simple back end to print to a file. There is also Google Cloud Print back end, but it's discontinued because Google discontinued Google Cloud Print. Uh, but the code is still there and if if you create a cloud printing service perhaps the code can be inspiration how you write a backend for your service and and there are also uh, packages of these repositories in in uh, ubuntu universe it's still in universe and not in main because it did not really. Uh, it did not get really picked up by the by the the GUI toolkits. So uh, now the new problem: the GUI toolkits did not have picked it up yet. We need coding workforce to to implement this. This and this could us save us from prob from the from the famous problem which I have mentioned several times today. The 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 print dialogs use the old cups the stone old cups uh, cups enum desks API which lists only the permanent cups queues and not the virtual queues for IPP services which cups has discovered. And for years we have already the new uh, the new cups enum desks API, which supports the virtual uh, temporary queues. And only the GTK the GTK dialog has switched to it somewhere this year because it works on on the current Ubuntu. I hope it was really GTK. I hope it was not a U Ubuntu patch, but I didn't did not investigate so deeply. I simply saw that it works. Then I directly opened Ocular and saw that QT is not up to the pace. It does not work there. It seems that QT did not do anything on the print dialogue in the last uh, 
something like 16 years or so. Uh, till just now, uh, uh, GTK switched uh, to uh, well, it doesn't use uh, it doesn't use uh, Caps and Desk API, but it uses uh, uh, IPP request create local queue, and ah, uh, this is, it this was is even better. And uh, it was uh, uh, based on my uh, request for enhancement for for Marek and he implemented uh, this year this year in february so in this february we have it, we have it uh, since uh, uh, since february and now it uh, got into ubuntu too yes yes this is even better thank you very much as demek for helping out there and because i commun talking ipp is even much better uh, and probably much more future proof and more easily uh, uh, adaptable to to future changes than using the convenience apis of cups so uh, yeah and no, so you but... did, you did very very well and and fortunately the i think the gtk dialogue is the one it appearing most often but with a common with a common uh, with a common print dialog back ends we could could even get much further because then, then the users will really see the same printers on on all print dialogs and this better <laughs> yes and the other new problem is the architecture of cups is already going on and will significantly change as Mike taught, told. And therefore, we must really, we must really uh, take, take care that the GUIs keep the pace. And one thing is, Mike already told that the local cup server, which runs as a user, will also take jobs uh, uh, with a dbus interface and the dbus interface does more or less exactly the same as the dbus interface of the common print dialog backend does and so it would be good in the development to work together with mike so that the common print dialog backends will migrate and 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 uh, move over uh, um, uh, uh, change into what Mike wants to have so that the common point dialog back uh, the backends dbus API and the new cups dbus API will be the same or we will get a, or, or at least we will get a smooth transition between what we have currently and between what we have with cups as soon as, as, as there's a local server because it's two years from now and the common print dialogue backends I want to have right now and not only in two years. And as when we have the local server, what I want to have in two years then, that the local ser cup server will not need to be a common print dialogue backends, but we want that the local cup server will be its own common point dialog back end. Imagine the ugliness of if you have a point dialog talking dbus to a module <laughs> and this module talks again dbus in a little bit different language but in a very very similar language to cups. This is really strange so we should avoid it but we want to have the common print dialog backends right now so we should start off to work on it to do to continue development to do the integration and to work together with mike that we get a sm smooth transition
Avik, I want to ask you something. Who was the last one uh, working on the on the common pointing dialogue backends? Was it, was this Ritwig? Avik, are you there? A week, could you, you are perhaps mute, talking and muted. So, uh, we had some former uh, Google Summer of Code students working on it. Zdenek, did you, did who did communicate uh, with someone about the the common point dialogue backend? It was probably not you. It was probably Marek. Do you know with whom he con communicated? Sorry, I don't really recall. I I, I know uh, Marek was on the part uh, of uh, as uh, GTK maintainer, but uh, the uh, the person from from our side. I am not really sure, sorry. Ah, uh, yes, because I would like to know it because there were some former students working on it and uh, there was uh, even some code uh, put put onto, uh, uh, onto a GitHub by them. Not really done a, a pull request, but if, if the person does not answer anymore, I, I would pull it over manually probably. Uh, There, I, I've even tested it. I remember it. Uh, I remember and, uh, and it worked. This, this improvement was simply that, that it added support for, you, for human readable option names and it worked and uh, only by command line naturally with a, with a command line demo tool in the, in the CPDB libs package. But it worked, and so I, I think I will overtake it. But I would like to know who, with whom uh, it was communicated to find out what's going on. And therefore, I want to, wanted to ask Avik, who was uh, the, who were the last ones to work on it? But it seems that Avik is not here. One moment, please. I've pinged a week now. I hope he will come back. Yeah, till this time. Hi. Avik, who was the one who last worked on uh, on uh, on the common print dialogue backends was it Ritwig? Yes. Because Red Hat, Red Hat people were, were or, or GTK people were talking to them and they did not answer. Uh, it was uh, Ritwig, and after that, uh, Priyadarshi also worked on some parts. Who? Priyadarshi. Last ah, yes. year it was Priyadarshi. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yes, because when when they really... I, I have all, also invited all these people. 
to, to, to listen in here, but I did not get any answer from anyone. I've invited so, something like 10 students or so to, to listen in here. Uh, probably, yeah, we can we can uh, talk to them over the email and discuss with them. Uh, probably they were not able to join the session. Uh, yes, but yes. We can they have no tickets, them. but they could could probably uh, connect by the by chat. But on chat, no one uh, probably the chat is broken. By chat, no one commented. I've looked now again. I've also told them that the important sessions are these ones here with the graphical user interface. Great. Yes, you, you are CC. You have gotten this uh, email in CC, so you can see this email. And so, as we nearly, uh, really should get, get on with this. And otherwise, in general, we need people as for everything for, for doing coding. And here is uh, GTK is already nice that it, it talks at least with at, at least with the current cups correctly. But QT is really, really bad. And we and, and if we we pick up with the common print dialog backends and if we get gtk qt and qt i think libre LibreOffice already supports them gtk and uh, qt uh, using them then we are a big step uh, further especially for the for the poor users <laughs> of qt QT is really not cute in printing. And so any other questions, any suggestions? So how is it supposed to work with INCAPS 3.0? You in mentioned that we yeah, you mentioned about some graphics, yes, I mean, user yes, interface yes. Ele elements in CUPS 3.0. Yes, yes. CUPS 3.0, what I have understood is that we have a local CUPS daemon. This is a daemon, which is not nothing graphical. A local CUPS daemon, which is running as the user, and it has it does not have only the socket, uh, the the socket interface, the the socket I, IPP interface as we have with the current cups daemon. It has a new interface, a new Dbus interface. This is what what Mike has thought thought out that it should have a new Dbus interface and that print user applications, preferably print dialogues are talking dbus to cups to send jobs to to find out which which printers are available to get the capabilities and options from the printers and to send jo send jobs and so what the dialogue does is is exactly more or less exactly what i'm talking here about what the dialogue should do with the common print dialogue backends and what this cup the dbus interface of this cups daemon does is more or less the same thing as as the cups as the cups backend does currently meaning that the the the, the, the local cups daemon could die, uh, could work as a backend by itself, but I'm not. But but it's not really, as I understood, not really. The this daemon is not really uh, a graphical user interface. And Mike has told that not only this simple, this simple operation of printing, but other operations his dbus interface would also uh, support it like listing jobs and and whatever user wants to know from cups and so on so it just the cups will have uh, some standardized api 
Yes, on, yes. On the bus IP. Yes. API. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And he t tells that the IP API should get similar to IPP. For me, it looks like that he will try to get some kind of IPP over uh, IPP over D bus. either this way or he wanted to say that he wants to make a dbus AP, api which is capable more or less of what ipb is capable of as at least this one or it could be even an ipp over dbus okay but i hope so you know without the syntax layer yes <laughs> I'm, yes, yes. Because and he you can already decomposed the, the, the graphical IP. user interfaces. That, that toolkits must need to support all this, so that uh, this dialog that, that this uh, local server would actually work. But I cannot imagine that Mike will uh, code any graphical user interface. Okay, thanks. Yes, it, it had been great if Mike had been stayed here because he could really participate in this discussion. I think we should right away tomorrow or perhaps in the perhaps in the end of the whole thing here be, be, because Mike is then back. We should talk with Mike in the end of the whole thing here and let Bavna start early now. And and if mike will not will miss the rest of the session will not come back in the end of our session we should perhaps right away today at night or tomorrow open a thread on on op, on uh, the open printing mailing list about common print dialog backends and local cup server To really start away with a co coordinated roadmap, what we will do. So, is Bhavna here? I think uh, I think she's not yet in. Could you? Uh, yes, I'm here. Well, okay, ah, I I'm, here. Here. I'm here. Yes, yes. yes I'm here. Is it so I think we it would be best best now that you start early, so that uh, that we have the rest of the day today that we ca could perhaps catch Mike in, at the end of of today's uh, micro conference and discuss about print dialogues, graphical user interfaces, and the common print dialogue backends with Mike. Okay. Still, it's so, a five minute warning for you. Yes, yes. Uh, this session is already over. We are switching to 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 Bhavna now. And, and now we will be having a break in between. Ah, that's that's the break. Yes, right. Then, exactly. uh, then we put. Then we have the break early too. Yeah. So we have a break followed by a printer scanners, uh, driver design and development from you, and then Vavna. Yeah, and, and and if my spec after the scanning sessions, then we will look into discussing uh, graphical user interface with Mike. And if right. not. If not, if Mike will not come come back, then we have we have completed our micro conference. So we will break out uh, for uh, ten minutes. Let us break up out only for five minutes because we are somewhat over. Right, so if everybody is fine, we can take a short break of five minutes. Yes, yes. So, uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, resume after uh, five minutes of break. So in the meantime, Bhavna, uh, so do you want to check anything from your end with regards to the log? Okay, I guess still is already in. So Till, can you hear uh, us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, oh, do you need anything? Switch. Yeah, do you need no. anything for your print scan driver design and development? I so, yes, yes, I'm Bafna. Yes, so we, I'm asking, yeah, we I'm switch asking, the presenter to Bafna. Still, hold on, please. Uh, so I'm asking you that uh, do you need anything for your print scan driver uh, design and development? Ah, so, ah, yes, we have forgotten this session. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have this session followed by Bhavna. Ah, so. Yeah, so could you I think we should give this session, we should give this session too. I forgot before, be, before the break <laughs> that this session was there too. So would you like to quickly uh, take us through that? Because that was yes. the planned session. Yeah, maybe yes, we yes, can yes, quickly yes. Take, take it through. Yes, I forgot this session. <laughs> Where is it? Here. Yes. One thing is we have to switch over to uh, printer applications and scanner applications for printer and scanner drivers. We had before that, uh, as I already told all the time, PPD files, filters, and big ends. This was a CUPS driver, and you had to, to throw them in indeterminate directories of the system so that CUPS finds them and uses them. And the same also for scanner drivers. You had to, the drivers are dynamic libraries, also files like the filters and PPDs. And you had to throw them also into determined directories so that the same front ends, uh, the applications which scan, would find them. And, and this was controlled uh, uh, by uh, in, in distributions by Debian uh, or RPM packages, which uh, by, uh, when installing, put, put, put the files into the, the, the right places of the system's file system. And there's only one file system for the system where all the packages are installed into. And so the applications, CUPS, Daemon, printer and scanner drivers all were in the same file system. And the problem is that the drivers are executables, the, the CUPS filters and backend are executables. The, the scanner drivers are dynamic libraries, also a type of executable, and they need to fit to the architecture, to the, to the distribution, to the library versions of the distribution. So for binary distribution of the drivers, you, you had to make drivers for each distribution and each architecture, so a big matrix of driver versions, which is a nightmare for the manufacturers. Therefore, they do not make Linux drivers. And as files, and, and as files need to be in specific directories, this does not work with containerized uh, packaging with snaps and similar things, where each package has its own, or own file system, brings its own libraries, and the packages could not look into the file system of other packages or into the host system's file system. So you could not add files to them. And so communication is only IP network, DBUS, and, and such things, or determined interfaces by which are determined by the SnapD design. And for example, for the for the cup snap for the cup snap, I'm working together with the SnapD designers to make the correct interfaces and so on. And so so uh, we need 
And so this also uh, asks for another uh, solution, not only the fact that we want to get rid of PPDs or that we want to change the architecture of cups. So we need the newer uh, architecture right now and not only in Ubuntu 24.04, which is the first with, with cups 3.0. And and uh, as I mentioned, sandbox packaging, every, every package has its own file system. This has not only the, this has, has also important advantages, not only the dis disadvantage of restricted communication between packages, but we, we, we are distribution independent. Each package br brings its own libraries, so no mismatches with the system's libraries, so we can install any snap on any distribution. It's like installing uh, Andro Android apps on any Android phone. Probably they have similar principles, and snap is, is more or less... Uh, copied from this uh, from from this uh, smartphone way of packaging and we will sooner or later get all snap distri distributions on ubuntu for example with in, in every version more and more packages will be snaps and not debian packages we have more security because uh, communication is very well, communication between between snaps is very very well defined by the interfaces uh, by the snap interfaces there's no arbitrary communication snaps cannot look into the file systems both static and dynamic part of of other snaps and so we have higher security and as as I told, the disadvantage is we cannot drop we cannot drop uh, one snap cannot drop files into into another snap, and so the old driver architectures do not work. And snaps only communicated, as I say, in uh, in def through defined interfaces. And the the other reason which my uh, which we already talking about is that cups is deprecating ppd files and therefore we also need the new architecture because every, we will have everything in I, and a driverless ipp printer or scanner so manufacturers have to design in a new way and and driver projects also and as, as Mike already told, printer scanner applications emulating emulating a driverless IPP device. And what Ma Mike did not tell, it's easily snappable, communicates only via IP. Multifunction device support as IPP supports not only printers but also scanners and fax out one can make a single printer application snap a single emulate emulation of a of an ipp driverless multifunction device which supports physical multifunction devices this is how i would like to see hplip for example in the future hp's driver suite which is for printer scanner and fax and web admin interface like with a physical ipp printer printer application or scanner application has also a web interface where you can set which trays contain which paper which option defaults to which hardware printers you connect your printer application and this then behaves exactly like a, a physical network printer scanner multifunction device cups Cups is used for printing and fax out. Cups discovers driverless IPP printers, independent whether they are physical or printer application. And Cups pools jobs, does the page management, converts job formats to the input formats of, of the printer application, because there are four different formats where for fulfilling the standard, you only, the app printer application only needs to support one. 
in some capsules to convert if needed. And for scanning, you have I standard language, IPP or e ESCL. So the client has to talk this language for scanning and the client has to, uh, has, has, has to discover by Avaha and DNSSD the scanners available. And, and uh, the user chooses a scanner and scans, scan and the client uses IPP scan or ESCL. In the beginning, the client, the client, it, which can be a snap, can have sane in the snap and uh, these and the sane and the sane, how it is called, the sane air scan backend, only this backend, not the others, to uh, to be able to talk to to be able to scan out of the snap. So not the sane backend package, only the sane air scan back package. And uh, and any sane front end in the application itself with the, this you snap, and this can scan driverless. And on the other side, you have the scanner application or a physical IPP scanner in a multifunction device, or even standalone IPP scanners. I've already heard heard about. And the the client snap can scan on it. And for the scanners which are already out in the wild and are not IPP, we would make a retrofitting scanner application or more than one retrofitting scanner application. And this one would in the core have SANE with the SANE backends package or with any manufacturer SANE driver. And on the front side is it has PAPL and with Bavna's work, we can we can do it sooner or later, and so the old scanners uh, on the, and this get snapped into the snap store, and so the, the 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 new user applications which are snapped can scan on any scanner. So uh, the development tools I mentioned, Puppel. This is a library for making printer and scanner application, which implements the ends, the end point, uh, which implements everything common, uh, which is uh, the, the daemon, the web admin interface, the IPP server implementation, job handling, answering IPP requests, especially get printer and attributes which is uh, the capabilities that a client can ask for the capabilities and, and, and the, uh, applica the printer application is answering back. And the printer discovery and setup and also some communication backends like USB, SMMP, socket and, and so on. And so only what is specific to the support device. So, so the, print, the, the proprietary PDL of the printer, for example, the, the translation of the drivers, uh, dri the drivers knowledge about printer capabilities into the answer to the get printer attributes requests. And, and this kind has to be implemented by the, by the driver developer. A lot of this part for, for retrofitting driver, I've already done a lot of this part for it. So uh, then we have CAPS filters uh, 2.x, which I'm working on and, and I hope I can release it too soon. LibCAPS filters now contains all the CAPS filters, which were, which were uh, separate executables formally, we call them now filter functions. So if you write a, a printer or scanner applications and need to convert formats, you can call filter functions, single ones in, in a chain. They all have the same inter uh, the same API, uh, the same interface. So it's easy to use them and to chain them and to get your conversions done. And there are also auxiliary fu functions like some I IPP attribute handling and, uh, uh, and, and handling the, the filter functions and, 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 and even embedding classic 
classic CAPS filters and backends in a pseudo filter function so that you can handle these like backends. I am using it for retrofitting drivers. Then you have libppd, so if you retrofit drivers, for, uh, which are retrofit CAPS drivers, which are PPD files, filters, and backends. All the PPD file handling, which is in libcups, I have moved into libppd so that when it is taken out of libcups, that, he, that we can still have retrofitting printer applications for all the old legacy devices so that they do not st stop working suddenly. And what I'm also planning is for libcups filters that we will have a lot of options for the configure script so that you can easily do partial builds of, of cups filters because in many snaps and many printer application snaps, especially native printer applications, which do not have anything to do with PPDs, you can see that you can then simply do a partial build of cups filters. So development to uh, an, another important tool is the CUPS driver retrofit library, which, uh, which I have done in the last few months. It's libpapa retrofit. I'm using it already in the PostScript printer application, GoScript Fumatic printer application, and in the HP lib printer application. And tomorrow I will also post the, GOS, the Gutenprint printer application, all retrofitted from the CUPS drivers containing the PPD files managing the PPD files, listing them as, as supported printer models, which can be both uh, listed, uh, both uh, selected manually or automatically. Also including CUPS filters, the driver itself, backends, if a driver comes with backends. And so you have a real, you, the user sees a real printer application and inside a CUPS the dirty work is done by a CUPS driver. And with this, you can, and, and, and all the adapting is done by libpapa retrofit and partially by CUPS filters. It even uh, translates the IPP attributes, the common IPP attributes into PPD options. And these PPD options are all different in the more than 10,000 PPD. So I had to add an algorithm with, which tries to understand the, at best the English of the, of, the, of the option names and choice names and also extracts resolutions from the PostScript and PJL code, which is in the PPDs. In this way, auto selects the correct options for print quality, quality color mode and content optimization. And so uh, you can easily print with any device which speaks IPP, in, including phones on this printer application and the printer does the right thing. And so uh, retrofitting CUPS drivers is as easy as making an RPM or Debian package of a CUPS driver. I can only, cannot say it's easier because you have also the, the the, you have still the difficulties of horrible programming of some uh, some uh, printer drivers like HP LIP, where the Debian package has 81 pack patches to fix the bugs, and HP is not taking care. And this, the retrofit library does not take away from you. HP lib in unpatched HP lib in 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 a printer application is as buggy as unpa un unpatched HP lib in a, in a Debian package. HP lib took me a week to get a, a, a retrofitted print printer application. Guten print I did in one day. So that's it with retrofitting. So, and another thing is Snapcraft. You, the preferred format of printer and scanner application is a Snap, so that your distribution independent, have security, and so on. So it's already over. So, and 
and to make it even easier, I'm also planning that to get to create a Snapcraft extension, so that you don't need to, to so that it's so that it gets really as easy as Debian, as Debian or RPM packaging. And as I mentioned earlier, findings I want to. Uh, 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 I would like to have that, that one can have find snaps in the snap store by the hardware signature so that with a printer setup tool, we can automatically find the right snap for the printer. Yes, design guidelines, you can see on this most important is the retrofit is only for the retrofit library and is only for retrofitting existing drivers. If you have new drivers or if you are act actively maintaining drivers, please make native printer application without the detour of PPD files. Yes, mo most of these things I, ho I hope I have already talked about earlier. So that's it for my session. I've made it as, so as short as possible so that there's also time for Bhavna and perhaps also time to talk with Mike if he comes back. So any questions about this? Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, maybe we can hand over the mic to Bhavna. Yes, yeah, seems that no one has questions or no one has understood understood anything because I talked too fast. I hope it was not that. Uh, for the sake of the timing, maybe if there are any questions, so uh, you can uh, send out an email to Till and uh, that can be discussed. So, Bhavna, are you ready? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, great. So Bhavna, I'm making you the presenter and you should be able to uh, change the slides from the your slide end. deck. Yes, the slide deck I've already changed. Oh, all right, fine. thank you. So uh, firstly, introducing myself, I am Bhavna Kosta from IIT Mandi and I'm going to discuss my this year's GSOP project, a part of it, a part, scanning in Papua. <coughs> Although I have put an overview and almost a detailed working of everything, still I would like to specify some APIs and properties which I came across while working on the project. Scanning in Papal. So firstly, moving on to the discovery of a scan. Devices here are discovered by DNSSD. They are records with appropriate service types for scanning and also the scan equals T in the TXT record of the printing part. The TXT record optionally contains an RS key that provides the resource path for the scan service endpoint. The presence of a scan key is a holdover from the Apple Bonzu printing specification but is not an indication of IPv scan support. DNSSD, due to air print and MOPRA requirements, this is the protocol that all, all MPs support. The TA keys and values are all very similar to the IPP ones and allow for correlation with the print service. Ahead with the pairing of a scanner, we need the support for adding support for pairing scan printers since the typical use case will have the scan specific txt keys added to the printer and the printer dns sd name value coming from the printer ipp scanners generally will not have their own dns sd records since they are paired with printers. ipp scanner registration do the same txt printers and span and scan specific keys 
IPP scanner registration consists. For the pairing API, to associate, to associate the scanner with the printer. So moving on to the API, uh, in the API, we, I have just included a function, Papal printer set scanner, with the two pointers corresponding to the respective counterparts of the printer and the scanner. And then the DNS SD code is working for a null null pointer to know whether to do a separate advertisement or just tag the scanner onto the printer's TXT records. With respect to adding the scanner TXT keys to the printer registration, a function named add scanner values with the counterpart with pointed to the scanner is added. And we can we are calling this function from for the scan from the scanning registration part, which will return the TXT keys. And the logic which I have worked on the API was first part. If printer and scanner are already paired, then it will simply return. If printer is paired already to a scanner, then we'll unpair the printer and the scanner and re-register and register scanner as a standalone service. If scanner provided, then we'll pair the printer and scanner and unregister the scanner. And then finally, re-register printer. Moving ahead with the scan properties. The client pulls the scanner's properties with the get printer attributes IPP request on the scanner URI. The scanner application knows the properties of the scanner it is serving for and uses and answers appropriately to the client's request. To expand on this, there are a couple core options that are important. Some of the attributes, one being the document format accepted, which controls the format of the scan data. The client provides one or more formats that it understands. The second one being the input attributes, which controls what you want scanned. This consists of several mem member attributes providing the color mode, scan, area or media, resolution, and source, among other more esoteric settings. And for these properties, Papal Scan T object is implemented and scan specific header files are added the updated attributes and capabilities of a scanner, like changing print to input, and a few modifications in the capabilities which I came across were no supplies for scanners, the LPD and AppSocket services aren't exposed for scanners, no raw or USB gadget stuff either, no raw listeners or USB for scanning, no print content optimized for scanning, no identify actions for scanners, and equivalent driver functions are added for scan using same backend is that in printing. Now, finally, moving towards the scan job. When the client sees the scanner, then the client sees the scanner, it can scan on. The user sets options like scan area, resolution, quality, color, ADF mode, etc., and request the scan. The client sends appropriate commands to the scanner application. If the scanner application uses SANE, it calls appropriate SANE backend with the user's option settings to obtain the scan from the physical scan. It answers the client's request together with streaming back the scan image data, converted using a filter function. In case, the format returned by the SANE backend is not a standard format of IPP scan. The protocol sequence on IPP is First of all, the client sends a create job request with document format accepted, which I have discussed previously, and input attributes to start scanning. The scanner returns a job ID value in the response. The client then sends one or more get next document data requests to read the scan data back. Depending on the format of the data, the scanner either returns all of the pages or images in the scan or the current page or image. And finally, when all pages or images are scanned, the responses to the get next document data request will contain the last document operation attribute with the value of true. And we are done. Finally, thank you. Any questions, any suggestions?
okay uh, so any questions uh, in general or any other topic that anyone uh, would like to discuss maybe we can uh, we can take it up uh, since the chat section is off uh, yes yes nothing, nothing is coming in there, there we there can is... see it but uh, but right. no post there the last post is mine for, for from testing before the meeting right right so uh, so if there are no other questions or any other topic to discuss on maybe we can adjourn for the day Yes, I think so. It seems also that Mike did not make it to come back. So I think for, for the common point dialogues and these questions, we should tomorrow start a, a, a thread. It's very unfortunate that Mike did not have time uh, to stay with us. Right, maybe, maybe we can start discussing over the email, our uh, typical mode of communication. And yes. uh, probably, uh, I think it will be better if we can uh, create a Slack group or something so that we have the discussions uh, over there and those are not lost in the piles of emails or something. Yes, and and at least when we do the, the communication correctly on the open printing architecture mailing list, these are archived and I'm linking uh, all the interesting discussions uh, every month on the news post. Right, right, right. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining the session. Uh, thank you Till, thank you Bhavna, thank you Mike for uh, your wonderful sessions. Uh, so this is uh, we, we should discuss more uh, with the emails or have in our uh, you know monthly meetings and special thanks to the uh, Linux plumbers uh, committee for uh, allowing us uh, to participate or for accepting our MC request uh, for over the last three years and it has helped us a lot in coming up with some wonderful discussions to decide uh, on the future of uh, open printing. So I think uh, we are almost done today. Unless uh, anyone have any questions, we will adjourn. Yes, and also thank you very much to everyone participating today for the fruitful discussion. Uh, Avik, uh, Mike, Bhavna, and also Zdenek and uh, and also to the organ organization team of the Linux Plumbers Conference to set up this nice, great infrastructure for us so that we can have this meeting and also broadcasting this meeting so that anyone could have watched it live and everyone, and also anyone could watch it later on YouTube. So, uh, all right. It, it, it is a lot of help for us for open printing to get forward to f also I hope to find, find to to in to uh, inspire people to join us on to to contribute to code and uh, and uh, and other resources to us to to get forward turning our ideas reality. That's correct. And okay. so after 21 years of open printing that that everything will go on and we will have especially have a great Ubuntu 24.04 LTS with cuts 3.0 and the new architect. That's correct. Uh, thank you guys for the conference and thank you Avik for inviting me here. And uh, it, it was a great experience. Now, nice to talk to you guys. Yeah, nice to talk to you as well, Zerni. Uh, and uh, I'm currently sending you the notes uh, from the conference, Avik. Yeah, and special thanks great. to Thank you. you very much for the for notes. Keeping the notes uh, <laughs> You're welcome. No problem.
Okay, thank you, Thorsten, and uh, thank you, Peter, uh, for your participation as well. Yes, Thorsten, thank you very much also for listening in and, and getting everything what's new and what's on and, what's, and what are the problems with, uh, with printing and open printing. Welcome in the club of open printing. Thank you very much for all the information I got today. It's really interesting. Thank you. And, guys, and, and, and let us have a great collaboration in the future. Guys, thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> it was great, inspiring experience. Yeah, Peter was here in our first LPC in uh, 2019 in Portugal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He had a great to tourist guide. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yes, I hope you like the little Portuguese restaurant. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, it. Do not I like it very English. much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. And uh, have a nice uh, day or have a good night. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.